hello guys how are you doing it's your boy Dave in this video uh, we will be looking at how to install and set up Django alright uh, and start coding it alright now to start uh, with the installation you need to first of all make sure that Python is installed in your system okay if you're using a MacBook like I'm using it comes with Python by default but the version of Python it comes with is an outdated version okay that is uh, Python 2.7 so go to Google, type download Python, and click this, all right? But before you download any Python, make sure that you confirm if Python exists in your system. All right, to confirm that, um, just come to your command prompt, all right? Let me clear this, all right? I was doing something else before this video, okay? That's clear. Okay, open a command prompt in your system, whether you're in Windows or 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 MacBook or anywhere, all right, and type these words. First of all, type Python, type uh, dash dash v, okay, or version. So this tells you if um, uh, the, uh, whether if Python 2 is installed. So here, as you can see, Python 2 is installed in my system, okay. If it tells you command not found, that means Python doesn't even exist in your system. But what we need for this tutorial is the latest version of Python, which is Python 3, okay. So you type Python 3. That's the version. Hit enter, and boom! You see, I already have Python installed in my system because I downloaded it before starting this video. All right. So, if you're looking for an admin template that is already built with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that you can add to any of your designs, whether Django, Laravel, PHP, Python uh, website, uh, this is it. So, it's already designed for you. You just need to take it and start writing your code inside it, and then editing. So uh, there are so many settings, there are widgets, okay, so many widgets, uh, you just need to uh, edit and uh, hide some of this, it's just plain HTML, see, see, so instead of you uh, having bad designs, uh, just use this and plug in, look at, uh, if you want to design an e-commerce site, they have designed all the e-commerce pages for you, uh, for instance, let's choose um, product composing. Okay, so this is a sample product comparison page. You just edit the HTML, put your own picture, and write your own code to fetch this information from the database. Okay, the design is already there. If you go to components, you see so many, they have so many different types of buttons, alerts, accordions, you see, all these things are already there. So anyone you want to use, uh, once you get this script, you just copy the HTML, and then there are so many forms. Um, even this because so this is a complete uh, if I click this now you see that I can click it date so if you're getting something that needs a date uh, there are tables there are authentication for instance user login sign up page so look at this sign in cover there are different types of um, sign in pages you see with Facebook uh, Apple sign in Google sign in everything already done for you so um, if you need this uh, you definitely need it just check the link below and go and get it and some other scripts I'll put links to other scripts that will make your software development easier just take them download the scripts and then add it to your projects and your projects will start looking really amazing All right thank you very much see you so if you can't see this in your system if it doesn't tell you exactly this then you have to visit uh, python.org slash downloads, all right? And then click um, download Python 3. As at the time I'm making this video, the latest version of Python is Python 3, but in your own time in the future, because you'll be watching this video from the future, uh, it could be a Python 3 points something something, all right? So uh, just know that it's the same, it doesn't matter. Now, another thing you can do is to download the version for the specific version for your system, all right? Now, uh, if you're using Windows, click here. If you're using Linux, you click here. Mac OS and other types of um, systems. All right. Now, once you confirm that Python is installed in your system, the next thing you want to install is um, is uh, Django, all right? Now, but before you install Django, you want to install a text editor, all right? The two text editors I recommend is something called PyCharm. PyCharm, okay. Um, just download PyCharm. 
click here download you download the community editor edition all right because the uh, pro edition is paid it's not free but the community edition is free now in case you've been using PyCharm then you're used to this already but the next thing I want you to um, the next thing I want you to download is uh, VS Code VS Code is another editor built by Microsoft and it's one of the best editors out there so PyCharm has opened you click on download for the community make sure that your own system is selected I'm using Mac so it's auto selected Mac for me all right now uh, download VS Code all right so you go here and download or update your VS Code so you click on that VS Code is a very nice editor so I'm using Mac so I download the one for Mac and you you download the one for your system Windows or whatever now the next thing we're going to do is um, if you're in Mac you can download homebrew all right so uh assuming you open a mac system you type download download homebrew it's just a command line uh set of commands that helps you to run commands on your system in, in macbook if you're using windows you don't need this all right so this site shows you exactly how to download homebrew which is uh, the first one is you copy this click here to copy then you come to your command prompt and paste and then run it hit enter boom it installs homebrew i already have it installed so i wouldn't need this okay so after installing homebrew you want to also install wget okay uh, brew install wget and uh, what else just scroll through the page i think that's all okay so homebrew is used for installing packages uh when you're coding okay used for installing uh packages all right uh you may want to install cask too okay um uh, well basically um if you ever run into any error and most things you ever need to install in mac you uh you can use homebrew for that so that's why it's a very important key um tool now we are done with this now we can go ahead and actually start trying to install django so and um, here comes the uh, tricky part just know ahead of time that uh, most people will not find it uh, straightforward to install Django they will run into one problem error on the command line or the other just know that it's normal okay I'll tell you the easy way to overcome that but in case you're not able to overcome that make sure you drop the question uh, including the error message in the comment section somebody will be there to reply you also copy the, the, the error message paste it on Google and you'll see other people that have had the problem especially on stack overflow and see how they resolved it and use it to sort out your own right now you're a software developer so you should be able to approach problems and resolve it on your own so but um it's pretty simple installing django so go to google type download django okay hit enter so now uh we can click on here download django it, it takes us to the django website the very first thing you notice is that um, how to get Django. Uh, you have to look out for the version for your system, okay? The mistake many people make before installing Django, first mistake is that they don't try to install um, pip or confirm that pip is running properly. So go to your command prompt and look for pip, okay? Type pip, pi. Uh, pip3, okay? Some people make mistake of leaving it at pip pip is for python 2 so if i type pip now it says uh, pip command not found all right so if you're using a, a later version of macbook pip will not work but if you're using an older macbook all right or mac operating system pip will work but um since we installed python 3 it works with pip 3 look at this you see pip 3 works you see so type pip 3 on your command prompt and confirm that it works pip is something that will um, help us it's just the equivalent of um npm in node that's what will help us to install most things in uh that we need about um, django all right here is the biggest mistake many people make uh trying to set up django the way they would set up a react or php project all right in in django you have to create something called a virtual environment now we've confirmed that pip um, is installed let's create a virtual virtual environment so uh in your command prompt uh, you should have a folder on your MacBook if you're using Mac, all right? You have to have a folder where you have all your projects. If you're using Windows, you also have 
to have such a project folder where you have your all your tech projects okay so for me in my windows machine it's usually at uh, my ww root folder for one server where i have all my sites that's where i put all my softwares all right so uh just have even on your desktop is very fine so but for me uh, let me show you where i did mine i created a special a special folder called project so if i do pwd shows you where um, i'm in users mac so i created this folder called projects okay so and i'm currently inside projects so this is where i will deploy my virtual environment okay like i said you can deploy it in any folder just note the folder so type pwd to see where you are and make sure that you can always uh, get back to that place if you don't mind you can use your documents all right or your documents folder and, or download folder whatever okay this is not a basic uh, programming class all right so i mean this folder we have to create a uh, virtual environment and uh, what i'm typing now is exactly how to do that so you type python trade dash n and they say vn that is virtual environment then you name your virtual environment anything so i can call it uh python python 3 uh site okay so you, you can just call yours anything but this virtual environment is essentially a folder okay so if i click enter and um, after a few seconds you see it's created now all right so now first of all we have to confirm that it's actually created so we have to cd into it cd is to move into it so re remember that we are in uh, macbook air project okay if i do cd python 3 site okay enter i'm now in python 3 sites to confirm i do pwd okay cool it shows me that i'm now in pro python 3 sites folder inside projects now i want to know whether something was uh, included inside i'll put ls so it says bin include sleep so as you can see some things were created inside all right so now we have to go back out of this folder and return to project so that we can start the the virtual environment so to do that we'll do cd dash dash four slash hit enter it takes us back to projects to confirm we we'll do pwd which is present working directory hit enter and we're sure that we're here so now you're going to run the command i'll tell you now uh, to start the the virtual environment we just created so now what we're going to do is to um, start the virtual site right the virtual environment we type on um, source okay and it, it type the name of the virtual environment okay which is python three sites in our own case it gives space not no space it puts four slash bin four slash activate so what does it mean? We, we are going into Python 3 sites and remember that there's a folder called bin, a file called bin inside Python 3 sites, all right? So we are going into it and we are uh, running a certain uh, program there called activate. Hit enter. If you see this, that means if you see the name of your uh, virtual environment, that means you've entered and you have activated your virtual environment. Now the next step is now to properly install Django. Now, many people that have problems installing Django is because they're not trying to install it within a virtual environment. Okay, if you have that problem, you're trying to do it outside of a virtual environment and uh, you have all sorts of installation issues. All right, okay, we go with we'll pip3, all right, install Django, all right, so hit enter. And uh, make sure you have your internet connection on and uh, it does all this and installs your Django. All right, after installing Django, we'll have to type a command to confirm that Django was fully installed. As you can see, it says that Django has been installed. So, but let's confirm. Okay, it's just telling us that our PIP version is a little outdated. Okay, well, who cares? All right, so it's telling us how to, uh, the command, this command we have to run to uh, it's upgrade pip. Uh, I'm going to do it later. So for now, we're going to type django-admin, okay, and see. So this, the, if, if you see this, right, that means you have successfully installed Django. Now we've installed Django, the next step is to create a Django project, okay, which is the actual website we want to build, all right? So uh, we can create multiple pro uh, Django projects like this from here. 
So now we've sorted this out, let's um, create a Django project. So we'll do Django dash admin start project. Okay, this is the command to start a new project. Okay, now you have to give the website uh, what website do you want to build? What's the name? We can call it uh, anything. So I'm just gonna call my Django site. Okay, our, our Django first site. I think that's our Django. Our Django first site or whatever. Okay, you just hit enter, and then you wait a little, and Django admin will help you create it. So uh, we're done now. All right. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is to navigate into this folder we just created. So I'll go cd. Um, cd our django site okay enter so we're there now first of all we do ls all right ls means to list all the files inside so this is showing us that there are two files inside there's one file and a folder this is a folder i know this is a file because it has a dot pi inside so we're good now we have to open our visual studio editor so if you installed visual studio when i told you to install it which is basically go to visual studio uh download vs code VS code. All right. If you have downloaded it when I told you, uh, then this command should work. If this command I want to run now doesn't work for you, just restart your, um, just restart your command prompt. If you're in MacBook and it doesn't work, and you've restarted your command prompt, it's because when you installed it, you did not drag it into your applications folder. All right. So after installation in Mac, you uh, Mac always prompts you to drag the installed file into your applications folder. All right, if you don't do that, then this command you will struggle with it. So basically now we're inside the Django site. We want to open this site with a Visual Studio code. So we'll do code space dot hit enter. And uh, in a few seconds, boom, our Visual Studio code has opened in this folder. All right, so do that in Windows too. All right, now we're good. Uh, the first thing you notice is that there are two uh, folders here. It says our Django site. It has some of these files, and uh, and then there's manage.py. The next thing I want you to do is that we have to um, install some extensions. So go to the extensions tab, okay, and then you look for Python extensions. The first one is Python. All right, Python extensions. You see, you click on the install. I've already installed it. That's why you're not seeing the install button. Another thing you want to uh, install is called Pylands, okay? Pylands. Okay, uh, make sure that you install Pylands. I already have it installed. Okay, install Pylands. Now, once you're done, uh, Pylands, it may ask you a question here uh, whether it should load Pylands with every uh, Python file. You say yes, you have to accept the pop up. All right. Okay, so uh, let's look into these uh, folders that were automatically created by uh, Django for us. Here's one possibility. The possibility is that you might be getting an error such as um, here, getting underlined uh, parts of your co code like this one getting underlined. You need to install something called Python interpreter, okay? So you, you, have, you hold Control Shift key, Control Shift P, the letter P for Paul, okay? Control Shift P. On your keyboard in in macbook is command shift p and um, it brings up this special search box you type python interpreter python interpreter okay select this last one python interpreter and you want to select the interpreter that you of for the python you installed as you can see mine is perfect because it selected the perfect interpreter because i have python 3.10 so i'm not getting any errors but in case yours is using Python 2.7 or whatever lower version of Python, just set it to the one that you installed so that the error will go. So you click here and then boom, the error is gone. All right, so I'm trying to make sure that you guys run exactly what you're supposed to um, run and see what you're supposed to see. So um, let us look at, um, I increase the font of this so that it will be easy for you to see, all right? So let us look at the meaning of all these files. This one, manage.py, helps us to, helps Python to run command uh, uh, line uh, arguments, all right? So we're going to use it a lot. Then um, this line is not part of yours because I increased the font of this page. Uh, VS Code just created this folder. It's going to disappear. It's not part of the project, okay? So uh, if we come here, we'll see that there are some uh, files that were created. So this one 
And uh, this one, WSGI, they are re related to deployment. Uh, we don't have to look at it now, but later in the course, okay? Then you have um, settings.py. This is where we do most of our settings. So uh, in, um, in Laravel, for instance, it's uh, so roughly the equivalent of your .env file, roughly, okay? So as you can see, uh, things like language are set here and a whole lot of things uh, are set here. Or app.php in your config folder, that's what it is, all right? Then you have uh, your um, URLs. So this is the equivalent of your web.php. So basically this is where Django takes a look at. Every time somebody clicks on your website to do something, Django comes here to take a look at um, Oh, that click they did. Where should which other page should I open? So this file will expand it and write a lot of code in it as we go. Uh, but um, basically, this is where Django comes to see what was clicked or what was visited, and uh, what uh, other file should be loaded in your system. Okay, uh, it's okay if you don't fully understand, but uh, we're gonna figure it out soon once we start using it. So uh, I want you to open your command prompt and uh, let us start the Django app and scaffold it, all right? So click any of these things here. If I click this now, it pops up this console and um, you should click on terminal. If you can't see it, click this little dot here and click on terminal. So now we're in the uh, Python terminal. As you can see, now we can write some code, right? So the code we want to write, I'll drag this up. The code we want to write is simple. We are going to write uh, Python uh, tree manage dot pi. Okay, we are trying to um, call on this file, right? Manage dot pi. We want to run a program there called start up, start app, and then we give our app a name, all right? So we're gonna call this app um, dating, okay? Mini dating website, all right? So hit enter. And look at here, you see, you see, it's created another folder that it called Dayton. All right. And inside this folder, there is um, a lot of files. Look at all these files that it created here. Apps, models, test, views, uh, admin, and then it created migrations. Look at this. Interesting, right? So we're going to create another URL. I, I call it alls.py, okay? So I want to drag this down. And of course, make sure that your your server is running, okay? So I want to drag this down. And uh, here, you see that there's a folder called the first folder that was created when we first started this project. It has an URL, alls.py, okay? All right? And it has just one URL. Now we've created uh, our dating platform, okay? Um, that's just a folder. This is just a folder, I see. Uh, you know the folder by the arrow, okay? So from here to here is inside this folder. We need to create another file called alls.py and sync it, all right, with the other alls.py, so alls.py. So what this file is going to contain is the URL uh, to our project. In case you don't understand what this means, it means that we're creating a file that Django will always make reference to to know which page to load when a user wants to move to the next page. For instance, if a user comes to a login page and say, oh, I want to go to a register page and clicks register. Okay, this is the file that uh, Django will come to check. Okay, a register was clicked. Which of the files should I load? All right. And which of the views should I view is the, the HTML CSS that the user will see. All right. So first of all, we have to import Django alls. Okay, uh, import. Now, know that you have to know Python to be able to take this course, okay, in case I forgot to say. So we import um, path from Django URLs, okay. So the next thing you want to do is to import everything from, okay, uh, I mean import views, all right. You know we have views here, so we import it, okay. Now the next thing we have to do is you need um, a certain variable, it, you must name it, it this variable. It has to be this by force, must. All patterns, okay. Um, make sure it's spelled correctly. Uh, URL patterns, equal to, and then that's where you have this. Okay, so I'll do enter. 
and they fought. Meetups, Lord Views, okay. Uh, it is Splitting, Lord Views, Lord Index, okay. So basically, what we're saying with this line is that if somebody visits our website, let's say, uh, let's say the, the address of our dating app, let me comment this, this is how to write a comment in Python, just hashtag. So let's say somebody visits um, dating partner, my name is date partner, so let's say we built a site called datingpartner.com slash dating. We're trying to tell it which sites to load, okay, what should the user see if the person visits this, all right, so this is what it means, simply. We also have to go to the settings page, all right? And like I said, don't, don't worry if all this don't make sense, all right? It will gradually start making sense as the course progresses. Uh, all you just have to do is to stay online, okay? Stay on key, okay? Uh, as we progress, it will start um, adding up. All right, the next thing we're going to do is to go to the settings page, okay? And um, tell Django that uh, we are working on this project, okay? It, uh, I hope you know that you can work on multiple projects. Uh, Django allows you to break down your your website into multiple tiny little websites. That's what's happening here. So we'll go to settings.py. So right now that we have dating, let's say uh, dating has a football uh, feature. We can also create a football. Okay, we can just do what the, the same command we run here. Python train manage.py starting starts startup football. It will add itself to here the same project but now we have a sub site that is called football okay so that's a very intelligent uh, design from python so uh, from uh, django so inside the settings uh, we just need to list our platform among the platforms that are here say so installed apps okay so this installed um, by default auth admin uh, content types and whatever now we install dating so we have to add it so we come here and do um, dating Okay, make sure you put this uh, comma right for my dating so this is how uh, Django knows that this app now exists now the other thing is that we have to sync the URL uh, platform okay we have to uh, sync them now we go to the same under the same Django site we go to URLs we have to do something called include so we add it okay we'll do comma so from Django URLs we are in uh, also important include so now we have to use include here and like I said this is just prerequisite setup it doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense all right uh, where you need to really know what's going on is still coming for now just know that this is how you things you're supposed to do to set up your Django app here uh, we're going to do dating dot URLs so basically what we're uh, trying to do here is we say Hey, the main folder, just know that uh, from the URL site, help us load the URL of this here. So, you know, in this dating, we have created a URL. So that if we create another project like football, we'll create a URL and also come here and include it to, for loading. We'll do, we'll do something like this. The football, okay? So it will load all the URLs for football. You see, instead of us writing all the URLs here, uh, in this major or uh, main URLs uh, uh, .py, instead of us writing all of them here, we'll write them individually inside each project and then sync them here, okay? So I hope it's making sense so far. So um, come back to the dating, all right? And then URLs.py and uh, you want to add a forward slash here just in case yours doesn't go, uh, okay? So if you did exactly what I did and it doesn't work, uh, try a forward slash. Now, uh, finally, come to views.py, okay, views.py, and uh, we have to write some code here. So, as you can see, uh, some code has already been written for us. We have to import something else from django.http, import HTTP response, okay, HTTP response, okay. And then under here we do def this is we're creating a function and we're going to call that function index so in index function uh once there's a request receive it oops uh colon 
receive the request and return HTTP response. Hello world. Hello, I would say hello world. The D is for Django. Hello Django world. Now what basically happened is that we said uh, once dating is visited, we're saying uh, Django should come here. Once somebody visits our website slash dating, Django should come here and go to views and load up the index function. So Django should go to views, you see, and load up the index function, which is this. And what is the function saying? The function should say that it should spit out this in the screen. So the user will see hello world, hello world. All right. That's basically what just happened. But you know, Django will first come to this URL, the main URL. All right. And once it comes here and it will load the dating URL, which is this one. And once it loads it, it says, okay, um, if somebody visited slash dating, I should go to views of index. It comes here and look for which is the index among all the functions here. There's index. Okay. And then this is what we're supposed to do. So that's how uh, Django handles the a request. So right now we're ready to view our site, what we've built, what we've just already built a site without you even knowing. Okay, so let's view it. So you come to this command prompt and type uh, Python 3 uh, manage.py and then we do run server. Okay, hit enter. It will spin up a server for us. Okay, and um, the server is spun up for us. Uh, you have to confirm that there are no errors um let's just confirm there are no errors getting an error here is because we made um, two critical mistakes the first one is that uh what we had here was all pattern instead of this spelling all in small letters and in plural okay make sure you fix that and it's in dating folder urls uh, dot pi okay if you go to uh, this urls.py, you see that uh, Django already wrote this one for us and it wrote it correctly, okay? And then if you get back to that dating folder, uh, urls.py, you will see that uh, the index we had here was mentioned like a function, but actually it should have been like this, okay? Make sure it's not a function. And once you do that, you refresh and uh, you will see this. Okay, so um, there is a warning that it shows you here. This is just a warning, not an error. It's just saying that you have 18 unapplied migrations. Uh, don't worry, we'll get to that uh, because uh, it has migrations here. It's gonna get to that. And uh, But if it shows you exactly this, this means your app is running very well. Okay, now it's telling you that you can visit this app by visiting uh, 127.0.0.1 colon 8,000 that's where we'll see our app basically 127.0.0.1 is the same thing as localhost so we can just type localhost here that is http colon slash slash localhost colon 8000 also it's clickable you see it's clickable in case you don't want to type it out manually and then it loads now it shows us this error why i'll let you know shortly but look at the, the screen here okay at the top there also look at this one you see that it's the same thing is another tab that has localhost colon 8000 so they are both the same thing so this is how our user will see our site if they if we upload it now to it, our domain name and they visit this is how they're, they're going to see it so why are they seeing this um, empty space because we did not tell django what to do in case somebody visits our domain name.com okay but what if the person visits our domain name.com slash dating enter okay now we have hello world can you see it at the extreme let me zoom in yeah. see hello world okay because what we already told django what to do when people visit slash dating now let's try something out if you've been following my tutorial you know that i like to try out a lot of things just so i'll satisfy your curiosity okay that i know that you may not have the time to try so here we initially put four slash dating and um I removed it okay so I'm putting it back now as you can see the server refreshes now this server is listening to any change any file you save here the server will re reload so and uh, if we come here and reload what happens you see that it works so for slash dating and slash dating do exactly the same thing okay the only thing is that it will now contain a four slash in the URL okay so now what if we want something to appear on the default page look at 
here with enter this is an error what if we want something to appear we'll come back to dating all right alls.py and then uh, let's go with this. I have only a fault flag. Okay, our server has reloaded. So come here and reload this page. And uh, okay, we have to remove the fault flag. Here you go, we remove the fault slash. Okay, and we come here and we reload. You see, it works now. Okay, what if we want to add more URLs? Let's say uh, we had dating before and we want to add more. I'm going to remove this comment and uh, duplicate this line Control C, Control V. That's how you duplicate a line in uh, VS Code. I'll put comma and then this time around I'll do this. So what does this mean? This means if somebody visits the, the slash dating, all right, it should take them to index. If was if they also visit nothing, it should take them take them to the same index. Okay, so here we can do reload. This is the same. Another thing we can do is to get to this views file and create a special file for a special function to tell Django what to do when somebody visits nothing. So let's call that function home. Okay. Home. It doesn't exist. That's why it's white now. But if we go to the views, okay, and here we can define another function and say uh, def home request. Okay, and then colon and say return http response uh, you are home now all right good so i've saved it and then uh we go remember that i've saved it so we go here and refresh when people are home reload and boom it says you are home now you can see it right you are home now what if we this is slash dating slash dating boom it says hello world so uh, that's basically how you coordinate things. You come here in views, you write you write a function that tells um, that tells uh, uh, Django what to do. Then you come to your alls.py and tell Django which uh, URL should process which function. Okay. All right. Remember that this function can have a lot of things like um, uh, x equal to twenty. Uh, sorry x equal to 20, y equal to 40, and uh, z equal to x plus y. So I'm assuming that this is some calculation you did in your platform and you want to show the user the result, okay? So the result of the calculation is column, we do like this, uh, plus z, okay? So when people visit home, okay, when they visit nothing, it gives them, uh, okay, I think we have an error. Okay, yes, of course, it's an int. Uh, we're supposed to type cast it. Uh, this is regular Python code. We'll type cast it to a string. All right, if you have learned Python, you already know what I did. It's complaining that it's an integer. So here, we just have to reload and uh, boom, see? The result of the calculation is 60. So uh, this gives you an idea of how you do things in Django. Now we're going to get in and start uh, actually building out stuff. So let's go um, here and see uh, some other thing we can do. So for now, we're just rendering a text, just a text. Why is it? Because uh, we're pushing a text to the front, right? What if we wanted to uh, push something beyond the text? So you go to make sure that you're still in dating and you're in views. And now we want to uh, output something. So um, it, basically a HTML file, like your form, your login page and all. So that's what we want to output. In this case, we want to output the home page, but we've not created it yet. So let's create it. So those HTML files that make up your home page, you have to create it in a folder that you call templates. The folder must be named templates. So inside our app, I'll right click, new folder, templates. And then I'll also create a folder inside template that is named the same thing as the app, okay? Because if you have multiple apps, um, it might start confusing uh, Django. So you have to create another folder inside called meetups. So now any file we now create inside this, let's create another file. Let's create a file inside meetups. 
So I'll call index.html. Uh, just to be sure, I hope we created the right thing. We're in templates, meetups, index, perfect. Okay, so this is this is how you create it. Now, if you uh, just a little dig, uh, a little digging into how um, Django processes this thing, if you go to settings.py on our Django site, you will see that um, Django here under templates will look into your directories for a file named templates, a folder named templates, all right? And uh, try to work with it. So that's why we must name it templates and then meetups. Okay, so uh, you understand shortly why it's meetups, but I just said that um, it's um, not meetups now, but um, uh, dating, okay? So relate dating. So it must be named dating, all right? Must. So if we create other apps like football, uh, then inside the templates folder of the football, we'll call it uh, uh, football, all right? So inside here, let's create a HTML. So this is a regular HTML that you're used to. You can start typing gradually, or you can do this magic. Uh, you, you type an exclamation, and then you hit the tab key, boom. It writes a basic HTML um, code for you. So that's how, that's the power of, um, uh, that's the power of VS Code. So here we can start writing HTML. The first thing I want to write is um, a heading tag. Just to be sure, say this is our first. This is our home page. Okay. Okay. Here we can say the partner is is the best tutor. Okay. Uh, his email is a real the partner at gmail.com okay so that's uh his real email all right that's my real email so uh here we're going to call it um our jungle app so this is just a basic html now we have to tell django to load this html whenever somebody visits nothing else site.com slash nothing so how do we do that we'll, go, we'll come to us.py and say when somebody visits slash nothing comes home fine and then we get to that views at home so we we'll get to views and tell django that here okay instead of doing all this calculation you just render the html file so remove all this and say just return render request comma meetups that is this meetups dot index index okay. so that is how uh, Django would do that okay so um, our site has refreshed so if somebody visits this now below and um, there is an issue and that issue is uh, we have to do dot index dot html index dot html so we're seeing this error because the folder we tried to rename, uh, we didn't rename it. So we're saying templates go to meetups. So basically it's saying that it couldn't find, it couldn't find meetups.index.html. So it couldn't find this folder. That's because we are referring to something else. So here, instead of meetups, it's a button, okay, button.index.html and then we refresh. Uh, refresh. Oops, just reload. And uh, good, it's now looking for the right thing. So saying it couldn't find dating.index.html. Okay, good. So uh, from here, there you go. It works now. Now, if you uh, if yours is still not working, it's uh, because this command line has not reloaded. Okay, so here it's because here has not reloaded. So you have to stop this server and uh, restart the server, which is you press Control C okay on your keyboard click click here then press ctrl c i hope you can see my screen oh, okay i'll let me clear i pressed ctrl c then you run the command again so to remember the command you just press the up arrow key on your keyboard until you see the past command all right so which is this one i hit enter and our server is restarted so now the server has reloaded and loaded this file properly okay 
and if you now refresh you would see it so in case you ever fix a uh, something and it doesn't show just restart your server just to be sure your server is not the cause but, but this is a very um ugly website it's just a plain website without any css so uh let us use some css we could use some css all right okay um in django you have to name a css folder static okay so we have to create a file here and a new folder here and we'll call it static and just like the other time, we are also going to create a folder that we call the same name as our website. So we'll call dating. Okay. So inside dating, now we can have files. We can have, um, uh, we can start having folders. All right. So the first folder, uh, let me click outside. The first folder we're going to have inside dating is, um, for images. In case we have images we need to use on our platform. And then, uh, Inside the same data, we will still have another folder that we're going to call scripts. That's for our JavaScript files. Inside the same data uh, here, uh, inside the same data, we're going to have another folder that we'll call styles. So inside styles is where we're going to put our CSS. Okay. So that's how um, uh, Django does that. So let's put a CSS file. Uh, we're going to call this CSS file something like a uh, file days.css okay uh, any name doesn't really matter as long as you reference it, reference it properly in your app folder now there could be a lot of css you could put here all right for the day but let's go ahead and uh, do something just basic let's say h1 h1 uh color if something is in h1 the color should be red okay just to show you that it works all right. In the future, we could come here and write a lot of CSS files. Okay, CSS um, uh, code here. But for now, let's just uh, stick with this one, and uh, we get back to our, our folder where we in our templates. All right, uh, where we did our index.html. We have to import it for it to work. So let's refresh here so that you see that it's not working yet because we did not import it. Okay. So now we have to tell our HTML file where it is. So uh, here at the head section of the HTML file, okay, we can just do uh, the regular way to import uh, files. So link rail uh, style sheet. But there is a, a little smart way that um, Django likes to handle this kind of imports, so that um, Django will go find the file itself. Okay, so you do this curly bracelet open and close, and the same thing you do. Um, the percentage sign open and close and then here you say static so once you say static Django now knows that oh we're talking about this static folder and we now import the file okay we say uh, dating so this dating all right slash styles which is this uh, sorry where is it static so we're already here we're saying this dating slash this styles then slash the base.css inside it, so we'll say slash uh, base.css okay so this is how you tell uh, a Django HTML file where to find the CSS and of course you close it right we have closed it all right so I think I need to expand this just a little uh, so that we can see the full code see all right so now let's go check our server has refreshed itself already now we have to reload this and there is an error it says um, invalid block tab on static okay so let's go fix it so the reason we're seeing this error is because we have not um, actually unlocked the um, we need to import per se this static uh, code so here we're using static without telling this page what static is so let us go tell it so at the, at the top of your page you do the same thing uh, percentage and then you do um, double percentage space okay now we have to do load space static so now Django loads static and now knows what static is so it knows where all these things are so if we refresh here uh, where is it reload reload and we good okay so to be sure that that CSS actually works uh, what we can do is to come here h1 we said h1 should have a red color 
go to base.css and um, usual if it doesn't work it because it's because your server is sleeping all right so you go wake it up by just turning it off Control c on your keyboard and uh, I'll press the up arrow key here your server here i'll just press Control c like this and uh, I'll so you press Control c then you press the up arrow key to see this command that we ran which is uh, then hit enter to restart the server once your server is back in back online uh it should work all right perfect now i reload it works perfect and uh, we have to get back to our code and uh, continue okay so now if you look at the server it's saying that get it's going to fetch this base.css and inject it into the html page okay uh, there is something called a templating engine. Let us talk about it before we proceed. Uh, a templating engine is uh, basically the way most frameworks would want you to write your HTML. In Django, Django has its own templating engine. So just go to um, Google, type something like this. Which templating engine does Django use or Django templating engine, whatever. Okay, so you click on this, uh, the Django uh, template language, okay? Now, that's, that brings you to the Django documentation, to this template language, okay? Make sure that it's, it mentions the current uh, Django version you're using. Now, if you scroll down, you'll see uh, how Django expects you to write HTML and uh, Python together. If you're using something like, um, like uh, React, there's a certain way React wants you to fuse HTML and um, JavaScript together. Same thing with Laravel. There's a certain way Laravel wants you to be able to write HTML and, and PHP. So in this case, uh, Django expects you to use some of these curly bracelets and stuff to be able to write PHP instead of open, uh, not PHP now, uh, Python. All right. So let's, it's actually simple to master. As you can see, it's not that much. And then there are some things, you know, but you figure it out as you go, but they are all generally the same. For instance, if you are writing an if statement, this is how you are going to do it. You must put this as start and uh, put this as close. Uh, in Python, if you are writing just raw Python, you wouldn't need these uh, bracelets, okay, and percentage marks. You just write your if this way. All right, then if you are uh, about to output a variable, you can write HTML directly here. This is HTML, right? This is just a text. But then if you want to put a variable, put a variable, the value of a value variable, uh, uh, Django expects you to put two curly bracelets. So that's just it. And one thing you have to know is that um, every if statement now has an, an ending, a closing if statement. It's called an end if. In Python, uh, raw Python, you don't need to uh, end the, uh, the if statement. Python will figure out by your spacing. When you put space, okay, Python will know that, yeah, it has finished. Uh, same thing with elif and um, every other thing you want to write, even for loops. Okay, look at this. This is a for loop, right? For this and that, okay. At the end of the day, you want to end for. Okay, so don't don't forget that. Uh, in Python, we have to always uh, end. In uh, Django templating engine, we have to always end whatever we start, okay. There's a way to put comments, and that is the open the bracelets, and then you uh, put hash, okay? Once you put this hash, in normal Python, you just need one hash, and then you don't need the bracelets. Okay, so that's just it. Um, every other thing there is just, uh, you may never even get to use them, okay? But uh, we'll see them as we go. All right, now you've seen, got a rough idea of what a Django templating engine is. Let us try and uh, put it into action. So let's say, for instance, that in our code, inside dating, in our code, where we wrote um, views, okay? So let's say that we want to pass in when somebody visits home, okay? Uh, let's say here, for instance, if somebody visits home. We want to pass in a certain data we got from the database. So I'm going to simulate data now and say uh, friends. Let's say we got friends inside this and it's a list, okay? In Python, I don't know why it's called it. Friends is a list, you know, the list is a, the equivalent of an array. So let's list friends, okay? Friend. Uh, just like this. Uh, 
or let's say friend name, whatever. Dave, uh, the next friend. We even do that, okay? Before we do that, let's just say that um, just a variable friend name is equal to a partner. Okay, so how do we pass it to the HTML so that we can display it in the HTML? In Django, you just need to uh, do this. You pass in a dictionary that contains a list of uh, variables you want to pass from your function into the into this HTML file. So, and now we want to pass friend name. So I can call this friend name. Okay, it's a dictionary a dictionary about a friend name. Here, yeah, make sure that it's a string. Okay, this is a string. Uh, another thing we can do is just know that this can be anything, but when you want to access this value from inside this file, you must use whatever is here. Okay, so I can say uh, here, for instance, the friend name. Okay, so in, in, in index.html, we're going to use this, but not this, all right, because this is just assigning the value to this new variable. Okay, so I'll save this file. Then I'll go to index.html. Now I can I have access to the friend name. So I'll go to index.html. I can say here, for instance, remember what we saw in the templating engine. If you want to access a variable, you just do this way. The friend name, right? The friend name. So if we come and uh, refresh, Django app, refresh. You see, it, it's part it out here. So let's see if we have an array or a list. I want to use something like a loop as much as possible. Some of the things we saw in the templating engine. So we go to the views, right? And uh, not, not, not this, okay. So here, all right, we defined it here and uh, we used it here. So let's say we had like a list of friends. So a list of friends equal to this. This is just a, a list and we have this. Um, then we can say just a dictionary. We say friend name or just name. Let's say name. Okay. Name equal to. We want to have many friends. The partner. Okay. The second person comma. Control C, Control V, Control C, Control V. Okay. John Doe. Okay, third person. Jane Doe. Uh, fourth person. Putin. Xi Jing. Okay, so we have these four people. All right, how do we pass it here? We simply say friends. Okay, we can now pass it as a variable here. Okay, and uh, most times it's best not even change it, all right? So that we can assess it as friends in this index. So if we go, come to index, we can now do some interesting manipulation here. Okay, very interesting manipulations we can run here. So uh, let's let's look at them. Uh, the very first one is, uh, let's try something first. Okay, so I'm gonna clear out uh, just this. Just for the purpose of this tutorial uh, and curiosity, what if we try to spit out the, the list directly and uh, we know that the list is French, right? What if we do friends and try to spit it out? Guess what happens? We load and uh, boom. It gives us the whole list, all right? So, but actually we want to just loop through and print just like when you get list of students from your database and you're building a student app. So now we can use um, a for loop right we can do to use a for loop um remember that you have to open this and then use percentage sign twice and now you can do four uh, let's give it a name uh, for list of friends in friends okay where is the friends coming from it's coming from this other also by far okay uh, not this one but the other one it's coming from the views page okay because we passed it in here so this is the friends we are accessing now okay so for list of friends in friends now we can do something 
remember that uh, just like uh, in everything let me put this in different lines to make it easy to read different lines okay so uh, I know you're used to being white space sensitive in uh, Python, but this templating engine is not really that white space sensitive, okay? Only specific white space. So here, uh, it's not in the, uh, let me not say white space, but indentation uh, sensitive. So once you open a for loop, you have to close it, right? So we do this, and when we do this, we, we do end for, then we do this, all right? So that's how it has to be. Then we can write code in between. Okay, so the code we're going to write here, it doesn't have to be indented actually. So we just do p, and now we can do something here. We we'll print out each of the posts. We we'll do this. This is how to print out a variable, and uh, we can do list list of friends dot name. Okay, where is the name coming from? Because um, I'll save it. The name is coming from here. We're saying list of friends dot name okay and we're saying for each of these so it's looking and it's checking out it's printing what the name is okay so if we come here we can we have done the printing so let's let's see what our code says below and as you can see it has printed all of them now you can write regular HTML here for instance let's say you write um style equal to font uh, okay color this is regular CSS uh, green okay so we're working with green today and um, we come here and reload and green you see so uh, that's basically how it works but let's try an if statement let's say here inside um, views.py you have another variable and that variable says um, display display uh, let me say should display okay equal to false okay let's say false oh okay let's start let's start with that false okay so here we can do comma and then should display and say should display should be equal to what should display good so here we can in our index.css now we can do some if statement so we can do how do you write if statement do you remember uh call it bracelets and then percentage now you say if should uh, if should underscore display that is if should display is true it's the same thing if should display then display this okay what do you do with if you do end if right percentage sign once you open something, you have to close it. And if, and uh, let me just indent this thing for the purpose of clarity, not that it's really needed, okay? So that it will be easy to read. So if you display, then uh, do the loop, otherwise don't, okay? So if we refresh here, nothing will happen because should display is uh, true, okay? So we have an issue here. Uh, our code actually worked well because I thought that I set uh, should display here to true but actually i set it to false so what if we change it to true okay we change it to true save come here reload and boom you see so that's how if statement works and then you can also do else for instance uh we can come to the html and do else so here you can do just a little bit please you can do else and do else okay or you can do elif whatever so else what does it do if should display works you can do a p i say should display variable has been set to should display okay Okay, so save. So reload. Okay, so let's go set it to false and see what's gonna happen. It is set to true, so this run. So what if it's set to false? False. Note that the false here has capital letter, right? So if we reload, 
it says boom should this blue variable as a set of false so that's how the uh, templating engine works we're going to use more commands from the templating engine as we go on all right a, a few more commands we're going to use them guys we have a, a little challenge let's create a nice looking site okay so uh, i could just start here and start writing all the css inside our static okay i can start writing all the css but this is not a css tutorial class so i'll just import something called bootstrap if this is your first website ever then uh bootstrap might be new to you but basically bootstrap is a set of pre-written css that makes it easy for you to forget about writing css and focus on just um getting your website to look good so um to use uh, bootstrap you just go to uh bootstrap website okay I, the website is actually getbootstrap.com okay getbootstrap.com now there are many versions of bootstrap that are really okay there's version 3 version 4 or 5 so we could use anyone so we'll click get started the current one as at the time of making this video is uh, version 4 and uh, version 5.3 but the most popular one is version 3 3.6 or so is the most popular one any version 3 of bootstrap okay but let's get started first uh, first thing we want to do is to import bootstrap okay so when you click on get started tells you what to do there's a cdn okay so bootstrap just says you could just paste this and this in the head section of the page and you're good all right so uh let's do that uh we'll copy this and uh, we we'll go to our code, identify index.html, identify the head section, and uh, somewhere there, just paste it. That's the CSS, okay? Then we'll do the same thing with the J JavaScript, that's the JS, and um, nothing else. So, um, this is basically how it should look like. They said they paste the CSS at the top, but then the JavaScript will paste it at the bottom, okay? Alright, so here... We could paste the JavaScript at the top and it will work, but um, it's always best to paste it just before the closing body tag, okay? Just paste it there and save, and uh, we're good. Now, if we refresh our page, we, we may or may not see some changes. So, where is our page? We we'll call it Django app, and uh, we reload. Okay, not more changes. Uh, let me go change this okay first of all uh, we go back to our css base.css remember uh, we don't want this this was used as an example save it save and uh, well get back here so far we're not noticing anything but uh, as long as we have internet connection some magic has been done already some real good magic so if we go back to the bootstrap site you'll see that um, uh, that's all we need and now we can start working on bootstrap all right the first thing we need is a navigation bar this is an example of a navigation bar like if you visit a, visit a website this is an example of a navigation bar you'll see how easy it is for us to create it just using bootstrap so on the menu right uh we are on introduction now that's the page but we are looking for uh content okay so inside content no not content we're looking for components okay so inside components, we we'll look for navigation bar. So look at this nav bar. Okay, it's different from navs and tabs. These are just buttons, but this one is navigation bar. We'll click on it, and if you scroll down, you see that Bootstrap has given you a sample navigation bar. So this code here, the whole of this code is gonna produce something that looks like this. All right. If you scroll down, you see more different designs, different different designs. Okay. So there are a whole lot you can use i think uh for just the purpose of this video i need something as simple as this okay so i'll copy this and then go to our code uh under the bottom under the first thing in the body save okay come here in our code and uh, refresh so our django app if we refresh now I'm going to see that it works okay you see nice design the only thing missing is this image because we don't have images yet so we're going to include images shortly now more importantly i want to see 
put down the list of friends. Okay, the list of friends. Um, how do we use a design for it? It's called card. Okay, so you click on card in Bootstrap websites, and you'll see something like this. This is, this is the kind of thing I'm looking for: a picture of somebody smiling, their name, a little description about them, and then a number, a, a button to go see more of their of, uh, about them. So if you keep scrolling down, you see other different designs for this kind of card. So that's just basically what Bootstrap does for you. It helps you to come up with um, a nice designs without writing much code. Okay, you just copy what already exists. So I'm going to go up here. Um, there's this design too where they are side by side. Look at this. Where they are side by side. We, we could use them. What of this? So I think I'm just going to use uh, the first one here. Let's go with the first. Okay, here. So I'll copy. This is the very first one. So if you start from the beginning and you get here, this is the very first one. Click copy. Come to our code. Under the nav, click this. Paste. All right. Uh, the next thing is to go and check what it is. Reload. And we have it here. So this is cool so far. But then uh, there are other things we could do. For instance, we could delete uh, this. All right. We delete this so that we'll be sure what we're doing. So delete. Okay. Cool. Another thing we can do is in Bootstrap, uh, you may have to put a div that says, you may have to do container. So you see what I did? I, I typed dots. Then type container dot on my key, but then type container, hit the tab key. Boom. It creates a div for me with a class of container. That's what we're looking for. In Bootstrap, it is required that uh, the rest of your content should be inside container. So I'll copy this card and put it inside container. All right. So we'll go to look at it. We'll refresh and good. Um, what if we have two cards? Let's see what two cards will look like have two cards let's say we, let's duplicate this code and uh, paste here let's say we have to what all would to look like so here we reload and boom we have to okay good uh, some things we have to do is to create space between them okay so here uh, this bootstrap basically has everything you want so let's look at some things so usually what i do is instead of creating uh instead of pouring through or scouring through these um this particular uh page looking for what i'm looking for all right for instance we're looking for margin instead of going through everything looking for margin one thing i do i'll go to uh, google and say margin in bootstrap 5 okay so google is gonna give me some link you see spacing that will bring me back to that documentation and show me exactly where it is. As you can see, it's inside utilities and um, it's in spacing. So you also want to confirm that you are in the right bootstrap once you are coming from Google. This is 5.0 and um, we're good, right? It's cool. So under spacing, it teaches us how to add mar margin. Okay, I already know it offhand. I just wanted to show you how to get it. So you do margin dash, whether you want top, right, left, bottom, okay? So then you give it a number, okay? Usually between one to five. So here, if we look at our site, we want we don't want this thing to touch the uh, top. So we can say something like uh, right here, we can say uh, possibly margin top. This is margin top, okay? As you can see, uh, we can already highlight a number of things from it. So uh, our text editor is already showing us. So I can say five. Five is like the maximum that Bootstrap will give you. Otherwise, you have to write your own CSS. Boom, you see? Cool. Now, the, same, the, the next thing we want to do is to put it in the center, right? So as usual, we go to, uh, of course, you could use position. I can see it here already, but we can go to Google and search for uh, how justify um i already know what we're looking for but uh, and i've shown you how to get it from google but what we're looking for is float right we want to see how to put the elements in the center so here um 
that is fl float right left we're looking for how to put it in the center okay i think in booster 5 they use flex okay so um if we use flex all right if we use flex uh, if we click on flex right under utilities flex and you scroll down you would see what we're looking for uh, For instance, it has an example of something that is in the center. We can say uh, Basically what it says is justify Content center, okay Justify content center. That's what we need. Deflex justify content center. It's a class So we just take it and uh, add it to our container here so what it means is it forces everything to stay in the center. So um, we get back to our site and uh, we refresh and uh, reload and boom. Uh, it's supposed to be in the center but something is pulling it to the extreme. So what I will do is um, first of all make sure that okay we put end. Oh put center. Justify content center. Yeah. And good so it's in the center now so here we can put a space in between all right so let's say there is a space in between how do we do that so here we can say margin right right here say uh, margin right so margin right uh, do like five I think five is too much okay well let's start with five Okay, uh, no effect. If we get back to the margin page uh, under spacing, under margin, okay, spacing, margin, we'll find out why it's not working because we did MR and we see that th in this version of Bootstrap, it's not MR, it's called M dash X, MX dash left or MX dash right, okay, so we come here, the first box we said MX, MX dash right. We want to give a space to the right of it, okay, so what do we do? Uh, we get back here and uh, reload and um, it's not pulling it's not showing me yet what I want to see what if we, if we do margin bottom margin okay right that is fine okay MX right it's fine. I found it finally because if you come here in this same page it says that M E okay. If you do M E, that's margin uh, right okay. E for end. End is your right okay. Start is your left. So margin end would give you uh, what you're looking for, okay. So uh, if we come here and say margin end and uh, put five, and we come and reload, boom, it gives us space. Okay, so far you should know that our image is still missing because uh, we use Django to do that and get it from the static uh, folder. Okay, so far so good. Now we have to prefill this, make sure it's coming from our data source. For now it's just uh, a list, but uh, soon it's going to be from our database. So if we go, um, let's go to views, alright, views. And uh, what we have here, what if we add more details, okay, name is Dave, and what if we say that, um, I think before we do that, before we get there, uh, let's get to the index.html, and here, I'm going to pull this down. You know, we have these two cards, right? We have these two cards, so we're, we're going to do that our uh, for loop, remember when we did this for loop, okay? let's say here I'm lazy I like to copy code all right so every programmer should be lazy so we did this before we did a percentage sign for list of friends in friends okay so we are pulling this data from the views of pi okay this is friends this is uh, uh, friends okay and this is your display so we are say from list of friends in friends and for right we'll do um, percentage sign and four then percentage okay good and then uh, just to indent it and make it easy to read we don't need the second one again we just use this 
to test our code. So we show that our code is working. So all these empty spaces, my editor is wanting me to delete them. Empty space, empty space. Okay, good. Now um, we've done this. So for each of these, each of the friends here is going to list this. So here, instead of cut title, let's do uh, list of friends dot name. Okay. Fine. Let's go check out our design reload. So we expect to see one card with just a name. Okay. The, uh, sorry. Uh, this is three cards. Okay. With their names. Fine. Because we're looking through the four. Okay. We're seeing four cards with their names, not three. Okay. Good. Um, fine. We can add more details instead of just name. So we'll go to views and then try to add more details instead of just a name. We can say, um, we can say country. Okay, and the uh, country is uh, Nigeria, the great country of Nigeria. I'm from the best country in the world. If you've never been to Nigeria, uh, just put it in your budget for this year, all right, uh, to get to Nigeria and experience the full Wakanda, all right. Now, John Doe, John Doe is from country, okay, Wakanda, okay, and um. Uh, Jane Doe, his wife. Okay, the Jane Doe is the wife of John Doe. All right, Jane Doe country is from uh, Star Trek or Mars. Okay, and uh, Jane Ping, Putin Jane Ping is from Siberia. Okay, country Putin Jane Ping is from Siberia. Okay, all right. So now we have country. We can also add something like a description. Description. Description will be uh, the best programmer in the world. Best programmer in the world. Best programming to find the world. Okay, in the world. Yeah, that's what I want. And then uh, we also do here description. And what do we do in the description? description will be the husband the loving husband of Jane okay Jane Ardo okay R for R programming language okay so description okay the beautiful wife of John C. Do so C for C plus plus, okay. And then finally, uh, Jinping, all right. Mr. Putin Jinping uh, description. Uh, Mr. Putin Jinping uh, is uh, the leader of the uh, programmers in the East. All right. So cool. So we have description. We have a number of things. We could add more. For instance, as we go on, we could add something that is called log. Okay, a unique identifier for each of these. But let's just work with this now. And you see, it has passed into the index.html. Now we have access to it inside our HTML. Before we do anything, out of curiosity, I just want to reload this page. You see that it's still not showing it, right? The reason it's not showing is that we've not told our HTML to do that. So. We we'll come to HTML and we we'll track where we want it to appear here. So we want description to appear here. So we'll take out this, and then we we'll do um, this way, and do list underscore friends. Okay, dot description. Okay, so um, now when somebody clicks go somewhere, we can say view profile here. Okay? When somebody clicks view profile we want it to take the person to the profile so here we do slash we don't have it yet but i will just push put the slash dating that we created initially okay let's use slash dating for now until uh, we're ready to have a, a link so do you know where this slash dating is coming from because right here in our alls okay we have slash dating all right good so if we come here and refresh boom Whew. now we have dave partner jane doe john doe jane doe putin okay 
isn't it beautiful so far so we need a title here and uh, the way we're gonna get it is to get it by force so we come here to the uh, index.html and we come to the top of this place probably here and then we say h1 list of uh, friends forbidden okay okay um, so it's here and um, the reason it's here is because we did not um, we can do h1 co plus okay co mb so. oops um, basically what I want to do is just say that the width um, style width 100% okay uh, display lock this is just basic CSS to make it a stretch I don't want it to be on the same line with the rest of the content here so let's see whether that works reload um, okay guys uh, so first of all let's remove this all right uh, we don't need all that again uh, so here we just say the whole of this just go uh, we just use this as an example okay so here to center these things um, we have to create a div around each element so we say div we carry the whole of this and put inside and uh, we give it a class and the class is uh, uh, we, uh, we just say text center okay so that's how to center anything that contains text all right but it doesn't center a div all right so we'll create uh, a div around this so we'll say div okay and we carry this and uh, insert here okay so once we've inserted this here the next thing we do is a class class equals uh, text center now this time around we have to remove this justify here and put it here because if we leave it in the main container you know everything these two items are inside this one so if we leave if we leave this here, it will just be mumbling things up just the way it is doing here. But if we refresh now, you see that we now have what we want, a list of friends. Uh, so another thing we can do is to put a P tag here and say, uh, dating never felt better. Okay, list of friends. Okay. Or we can just say connect with people. Discover people. So now you get an idea of how somebody can fetch the data from the views, all right, and pass it onto the index, uh, the HTML, and use it to create something really, really interesting. Okay. All right. Um, let's go ahead and. Uh, we will we'll need to create a page that when somebody clicks on this, all right, they will have to, uh, they will see the more details about this person. And we also need to link the images, okay? Let's create a view page. That's another page that when somebody clicks this, they're gonna see the profile of the person and whatever. Now, one thing you have to know is that I could create it in different ways, okay? But I want to gradually and incrementally introduce you to new uh, concepts in Django, all right? So the first thing we're going to do is, of course, uh, we're going to choose a name for the, the page. I'm just going to call it uh, a dating details page. Okay, we have uh, we have um, index. So inside um, dating, right click and new file, call it dating detail details page. Okay, dot html. Okay, dating details dot html will basically contain the same html. Just uh, just type exclamation mark, hit um, tab. Okay, then we start putting things inside here. But 
I don't want this. I would like to copy an already made page, like an index page. Index page has a, a navigation, all right? So I'll copy from this nav all the way up, okay? And then copy. The reason is that I don't want to repeat all these things. So we'll copy, paste, and then we put the remaining at the bottom. The, the bottom here is uh, the, these two, all right? So we'll copy these two, that, this tree, that is uh, the bootstrap uh, JavaScript, and then body and HTML. So we'll come to the details page, put it at the bottom. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, I want to put this, pull this. So I, I held, to move this text, I had to hold shift and tab on my keyboard. So it helped me move this, okay? All right. If you only want to move it uh, to the right, you hold uh, tab. But if you want to move it to the left, hold shift and tab, okay? So I'm just going to put HT, uh, H1 tab and say dating details, okay? All right, but we can view this page until we create um, a URLs path for it. So um, basically, here is the idea. Each of these things, we need, to, we need a way to uniquely identify it. So once somebody clicks here, one page will load the data for just this guy. If you click here, the same dating details page will load a different data for this guy, all right? So depending on the page, just like in Facebook, uh, if you click somebody's profile, it takes you to the person's wall, okay, or profile. But then what you see is just the information for that person, even though it's the same HTML file. If you click for another, another person, the same HTML file will load a different data, okay? So uh, that HTML file has to have a way to uniquely identify each person. So on Facebook, you will see something like um, facebook.com, okay, slash uh, profile, okay slash uh, something like one two three whatever, whatever so this number is the unique identifier for that profile so this is the number that facebook app will use to query the database and find the details of the user with this uh, id and uh, retrieve their details so in this case since we're not using the database yet we're going to simulate this unique key so to do that um we have to come to first of all the views all right this is where we generate simulated dummy data for our, our friends. So, uh, but none of the values, this is key and this is value. This is key and this is value. Uh, I can also do it like this. Oops. I can also get it done this way so that um, it becomes easier to read, but I'll do it just for one, right? It becomes easier to read, easier to read, okay, this way. So now you get an idea of what it looks like. So what we're going to do now is to add another key, all right? Key value pair that will give us a unique identifier. So I'll do, I'll add the first one, which I'll call ID, and then give it a number, okay? So the ID for this guy is just one, and then same thing here. But I also want to add something else, just for the purpose of letting you know that it exists. It's called log, okay? A log is basically a type of uh, string arrangement that has dashes in between and are all small letters. So if I say the partner, let's say the partner media, okay, the partner media. This is the partner media. You see, uh, each word is capitalized. But if I convert, if I have to convert it to a slog, what slog will, what this slog will be? Dev dash partner dash media. All right. Now, uh, the reason for slug is so that it can be so that it can be used in URLs. So let's make a simple search on Google. Let's say we search Google for uh, how to get learn Python quickly. Hit enter. So we search Google for how to learn Python quickly. All right. So what you see is that, for instance, here. This guy does not use logs, okay? This is Coursera.org. It uses false slashes, all right? But when we look at some of these other file, other other ones, for instance, generalassembly.ly, it uses a slog pattern. And when you look at uh, when you look at the slog pattern, you see that it's um, similar to the title. The title says eight tips for learning Python fast. This one says how to learn Python. So the idea is that um, 
the uh, bot, the search engine, also reads the content of the URL to tell what is in the page. So uh, instead of just using random stuff like id slash for slash id for slash this, uh, most web developers would rather use a slug as a unique identifier so that the search engine can read it. Okay, look at another slug, you see, python-beginner-tips. So the search engine searching for what all we search for will read this and also read this to determine and make a, a, a good guess of what is here. Look at another slug. Okay, so a slug should be unique per URL in as much as an ID should be unique. Okay, so we have added an ID which is unique. We can also have a slug. Okay, so um, for this purpose, the slug will be uh, the partner. Okay, for the names. Okay, so normally in a real app, you have to, there are like um, in, in Django and in other frameworks, they usually have default functions that come with the frameworks that will automatically convert any URL you give it to a slug. You understand? So that you don't have to write the code yourself, but you can write it manually using things like, um, you can just write it manually, you understand? Using things like regular exp expressions and stuff. So we have this ID, so I'm going to add the same thing here. I'll just do ID. Oops. I'll do ID. Colon. Two, comma, all right, and then I'll put the slug, all right. It doesn't really matter where I put the slug, as long as um it's well formatted. So I'll do slug. What's the name of this guy? This guy's name is John Doe. I think I'm John Doe. John dash Doe. That's the slug, and uh, the slug for this one is slug will be. Jane dash do. Okay, and finally the slug for this one will be slug will be putting dash she. Okay. okay. So basically the idea is that the slug per URL should be unique. Alright, so here we're just gonna add the IDs. I'll copy this and paste because I'm lazy. The programmer should be lazy, otherwise you won't complete your jobs fast. So uh, you just copy and paste, copy and paste, and uh, three, four. Most of your work as a developer is knowing what to copy and paste, not really typing uh, long stuff. So we've modified this sufficiently. Now we have uh, unique IDs, and also we have something interesting, which is unique slugs. So here, in the uh, urls.py, urls.py, we can add a new URL for that meetup details page. So we'll call it path. Now we can call it uh, dating details. Okay. I'm trying to maintain the name I call the files. So you generally in uh, Python and um, in programming in general, not just on Django, you try to maintain file names with URLs so that, so that it becomes easier to navigate through your code. So once I see a URL, I can already guess the, the name of the file. So if there is something to debug, it's easy to find. So um, if you're working on things, like what I did here, the name, what I have here is friends, and uh, what we have here is also friends, okay? So what we have here is should display, what we have here is also should display. So I'm maintaining this name uh, so that it becomes easier to debug if I have a bug in my code. But if I don't maintain them, I'll just get confused. It takes longer to find our bugs. Okay, so we're, we're back to all the pi. Now we've created this. Normally, we're supposed to tell it which view to work with. Okay, so we'll do view dot what? Views. Okay. Views dot what? So we'll go to, we're looking for the function. So we're going to name the function the same thing. Dating detail. Okay, it doesn't exist. Okay, uh, we have to also be careful of how to name this. I'll, I'll use underscore, all right, for the function because uh, Python is warning me not to use a dash. So we'll go to view page. By now, you should have been used to this. Uh, you know, we had a function for home. We had a function for index. So let's create another function here. I'll hit enter. One, two, three. Okay, def. What do we call it? 
I would like to call it the same thing just to maintain uh, details. That is underscore, right? Details. Okay. So now here is where we are going to run the each the the things we want to do. So first of all, we have to re receive a request. Okay. Okay. So the next thing we are going to do is to um, get, for now, all right. Since we are not um, fetching this data from the database and um, we don't want to start writing long code trying to uh, identify each of these, this is just for demonstration. We'll get to a point where we'll connect to the database. But for now. Let us also simulate this this again. So this time, since we are trying to view one friend, we'll do friend, okay, friend, and then we'll put the details of the friend. All right. So I'm just gonna copy the details of one guy here. Okay, let me just copy everything here and pass here. Friend. The reason I'm using friend, you should be watching these things. The reason I'm using friend is because it's just one person that we need. But also, um, well, we'll pass it in later on. So this is just one detail of one friend. We're assuming that uh, we have gone to the database and fetched this guy. So how do we know which guy to fetch? We have to pass in the information here as a second parameter. So let's call the parameter something uh, you could just call it a user ID or friend ID and it's perfectly fine or you can say friends log it's perfectly fine all right so normally if you pass in this second parameter you would come here and um, connect the database okay search database database for the user with uh, log friends log or the url okay with friends log the friend with friends log and then um and then return the information the info so now we are assuming that we have done the above and uh, we have now returned the information here so what do we do next we pass it to the view so return render in case you're wondering where this render came from, it's because we imported it at the top. Okay, it helps uh, Django to return uh, an HTML file. Okay, render. Uh, so we first of all count the request that we came back with, and then we count. We tell it the page it should uh, load for us, and uh, you know the page. We it should load. Go to templates, dating, and then load. Uh, dating details okay for us now generally i use dating details so you can get an idea of what it is but in programming you try not to repeat yourself you try not to re uh, uh, repeat yourself so in programming there is a rule called d don't repeat yourself that is dry is a rule okay don't repeat so if uh, the, the better, the more closely and strictly you follow this rule, the easier programming will be for you, all right? And the, uh, the neater your work will be. Here's what I mean. Have you noticed the repetition here? We have dating folder and then one of the files is starting with dating again, all right? Generally, if I'm building an app, I wouldn't have this, okay? So since uh, this is dating, it means that every file that we find inside here is also dealing with dating. I don't need to duplicate it. I would have... Um, name the file details the way this one is indexed i would have named this file details all right or whatever else but i don't need to repeat the data but for the purpose of this video okay for demonstration purposes let's continue okay so we've done the we received okay so i'm going to delete this to stop the error we received the request Okay, whatever the URL sent for us, whether it's a form, that's what the request is saying. Whether it's a form, get, post, delete, put, patch, whatever kind of thing that that URL, you know the URL, when the user visits the page, the page makes a request to this file. Uh, so whatever it is sending to this file, we're receiving it inside request. It's accessible here, but we've not got to that point where we're using it, but this is just the way to catch it, okay? So, and then we pass this detail, all right? Remember how we did it here? We just created a dictionary and then we passed it. So we created a dictionary. 
and then we'll pass it and we'll call it our friend. Friend is singular because we're retrieving one item. Okay. So uh, it's um friend. Okay. So it's it's um a convention. Okay. In programming, especially in working with um uh, frameworks, there is convention versus configuration argument. Okay. Some frameworks are built for configuration, some are built for convention. And what that means is that if it's built for configuration, the framework tries to do little, too little, you will have to be the one to develop a lot of things by yourself. Okay, you build your app in your own way, like you write your code in your own way. Which means if you go to different companies, you will see the different ways they have used uh, the framework to build their apps. So uh, it becomes difficult to learn and join, learn the, the developer programming methods and join the company. But platforms, frameworks that focus more on convention, I hope I, I spelled this convention well. Is it this? I can't remember. Convention. Okay, who cares? So, um, frameworks that focus on convention kind of force the developers to do things in a certain way, all right? Like so some frameworks will not allow you to name your page details page, for instance. They will always tell you that if a page is going to involve retrieving a single item from the database, you must name it, let's say, view. You understand? So there are frameworks that have that kind of rule, those kind of strict rules. And what it does, the problem it solves is that if you move from one company to another, from one project to another that was written by somebody else, you can easily pick it up in the night and start adding features to that project, writing your own code there. Because you can already tell what this person will name their variables, what they will name their files, what they will name their folders. All right, that's convention. So uh, that's why I usually pause uh, to tell you what the programmer convention is. All right. So the idea is that if you are retrieving one item from the database, for instance, a single post, in this case, we are retrieving a single friend, make sure that the, the variable is named in singular. All right. It means that if somebody else comes into your code and they see friend, they expect that it contains uh, details of one person. Here, we are retrieving a lot. We are retrieving four friends. That's why we have it in plural. So which means if you ever see a variable in plural, plural that means you can look through it with a four, right? For in, whatever. Because it contains multiple items. You understand? All right. So now we have passed this to the view. We can uh, also, um, now we have told Laravel, not Laravel now, but Django, what um, to render for us and how to pass things into the view. We can now go to the view and display these things, okay? And what is the view, uh, which is uh, dating? Now we don't have anything here first, so we can, we can say uh, profile details. Profile, let's say profile details of so we'll, we'll pass the person's name what is the person's name you can say friend dot name so how did we get to friend dot name because here in the views the pi we know that friend dot name okay so um let's go to the all pi to see what we have to view we have to view dating details okay so let's go to dating details URL localhost 8000 8000 slash dating details. Okay, okay. Uh, it seems our server is not running. Problem somewhere, uh, I think it has to do with singular and plural. Look at our server, our server is warning us of something. Okay, it says uh, that um, module dating views. Okay, module, uh, where is it? Dating, let me minimize this. Module dating views, okay, that is dating views, has no attributes dating details. So if we go to uh, dating underscore details, so I'll copy it. If I leave this page, this screen, if you ever have all these errors, let's say your terminal uh, throws out all this bunch of errors, for, uh, just ignore it and go to the very last line. The very last line is what is telling you the problem with your code. That's what you can copy and paste in Google in case you need to use Google. So we'll go to dating views, it says that it can't find 
detailed detail. So here we use singular, but here we're using plural. So we have to reduce it to singular. Okay. Why do we have to choose singular as it against plural? Because it's retrieving item of one. That's why we have it in singular. All right. Just convention. It doesn't mean we can't go with plural. So um. So uh, let's stop our server. Remember how to stop server. You press Ctrl C and then uh, press up arrow and then run hit enter again to run the server let's see whether it still has an error it is so let's trace it again so the error is here because um our alls.py is looking for dating details but we typed rubbish okay so alls.py is looking for a function called dating details inside views and when we came to views we wrote detail detail uh, Hit enter. So this is what we should write here: data details, save, and uh, boom, it works well. So if we come here and reload, so beautiful. Okay, now it's saying type error data detail missing one required personal argument friends log. Okay, so what does it mean? It means that you have to pass in these arguments when. Uh, this function requires that you have this argument. There must be one argument, must. Okay. So, which means if we go to alls.py, we would have to pass in the argument here. All right. So, um, this is how you can pass in an argument. You could just do forward slash whatever. Okay. On the URL. See. Uh, if we refresh here, reload, reload. And you see the error has changed. So we're still going to come back and change that wherever, but let's look at what it's happening here. It's very interesting that you understand how to read the error on the page. Let's see what it's saying here. It says that um, the URL config defined in Django server or whatever tried these all patterns. So Django intelligently tried to search for with uh, this URL, okay? So we said dating-details. Notice that it's in plural. So Django intelligently tried here tried here and couldn't find it and tried dating details whatever and still couldn't find it so if you're looking for an admin template that is already built with html css and javascript that you can add to any of your designs whether Django, Laravel, php python uh, website uh, this is it so it's already designed for you you just need to take it and start writing your code inside it and then editing so uh, there are so many settings there are widgets okay so many widgets uh, you just need to uh, edit and uh, hide some of this. It's just plain HTML. See? See? So, instead of you uh, having bad designs, uh, just use this and plug in. Look at, uh, if you want to design an e commerce site, they have designed all the e commerce pages for you. Well, for instance, let's choose um, product comparison. Okay, so this is a sample product comparison page. So you just edit the HTML, put your own picture. And write your own code to fetch this information from the database. Okay, the design is already there. If you go to components, you see so many, they have so many different types of buttons, alerts, accordions, you see, all these things are already there. So, anyone you want to use, uh, once you get this script, you just copy the HTML, and then there are so many forms, um, even this speakers. So, this is a complete. Uh, if I click this now, you see that I can click a date. So if you're building something that needs a date, uh, there are tables, there are authentication, for instance, user login, sign up page. So look at this sign in cover. There are different types of um, sign in pages. You see? With Facebook, uh, Apple sign in, Google sign in. Everything already done for you. So um, if you need this, uh, you definitely need it. Just check the link below and go and get it. And some other scripts, I'll put links to other scripts that will make your software development easier. Just take them, download the script, and then add it to your project. And your project will start looking really amazing. Alright? Thank you very much. See you. Okay. Well, uh, so it's warning us that there is a problem with the URL. Of course, we are using uh, single and not plural. So if I hit enter. Uh, now, this is better now. The reason it's still not opening is because here in us.py we're telling it that it's not only dating details that there has to be something passed in 
we're gonna work with this right soon but let's look at that we have to do slash slash whatever okay okay, okay good it's in plural so we have to remove it make it singular save reload beautiful reload okay from to that point i told you that we have to change what is in whatever i use it as an example but this is the proper way to do it so but first of all let's read what the uh, the the error is saying so you learn more how to read errors it says type error at dating detail what slash whatever it said dating details function is missing one required positional argument and that is we called it friends log so how do i know that it's talking about the function uh because of this Okay, so when you want to pass parameters in an argument, look at this, uh, dating details function in views.py, this is the dating details function, and you can see there is a friends log. So if you want to pass in this parameter from your alls.py, you use this uh, greater than and less than, and this is where you insert what you want. In this case, we want to insert um, either ID all right remember that we use user id or we can insert this log okay so but well, let's um, work with just a uh, slog let's let's work with id right um id for now we're going to change it to slog shortly but to give you an idea all right so what that error simply means is that the uh the parameter, the name of the parameter in your alls.py should match the name of the parameter in your view, your views.py. So this is all.py and the name of the parameter we give it is an ID. But then when we finally get to this function in views, views.py, we called it something else. Okay. Now, uh, let's change this to ID for now. Okay. Like I said, we'll come back to um, slog. Change it to ID for now. We reload and boom. See, it works now perfectly. Okay. So um, it means that um, then, of course, we have to change this whatever. So, but generally, the idea is that if you pass in ID of one here, it will provide the details of the first user, and you pass in the ID of two here, it will go or three for instance it will go to the database look for the user with the id of three and fetch their details and uh, display it here so that's the idea another idea is the slog okay so let's work with slog instead of user id so here what if we call it slog and um we'll come to alls.py so before we do something in alls.py let's go to where we defined in views right in views here we call it slog I don't want the name to clash with the slog I want to tell you so I'm going to call it a friend slog here just just rename it to friend slog this is just a field in the list okay an element in the list or key okay so if we come to alls dot alls here we can say friend slog okay and then if we come to views instead of slog here we can say friend slog so let's refresh and be sure it works perfectly well it still works fine so now um there is something you can do in in django in django you can tell django to force whatever is passed here to be a slog so that's why we have this slog so once you put this it's optional but once you put it django expects that whatever you pass here django will force it into a slog format remember what i told you about slog format it's just a, a sentence in all lower case that has dashes in between that is basically built for um, the for google search engines all right so that just means that um what we now expect in this url instead of one id of one two three whatever we can expect something like dave partner you know that's one of the slugs okay then we can also expect john doe john doe Okay, all right, so let's quickly design this page. And uh, as usual, we go to uh, Bootstrap. For this time, we're going to do something interesting. So if we go to Bootstrap, um, we'll go and look for something that has uh, a similar design, for instance, cut. Okay, and uh, that's the way people would usually do things. Look for a card that has a good design. And uh, 
or whatnot. Now, uh, another thing you can do is to go to the internet, right, and look for already made designs. So let's open a new tab and say Bootstrap 5 a template or designs or, uh, snippets, snippets, okay. Bootstrap 5 snippets, okay. You see, this says BB Bootstrap. This is a website called BB Co Snippets for front end. And uh, there's another one, Boot Snip. There's another one, Live Canvas. Okay. So they already have lots of examples. And we'll find the one that has to do with profile. Look at Bootstrap 5. Lots of examples. And uh, hopefully their code is free. So, but I'll do it. I'll prefer to do a better search. Okay. You see all these codes sample pricing page, sample testimonial page, sample uh, contact page, and sample content page. Okay, so that's not enough. So I'll do bootstrap five uh, profile page snippet. Okay, so let's see this one. Let's check out this. So you have to be sure that you're working with Bootstrap 5. Otherwise, you can copy a code for a lower version of Bootstrap and mess up. So this one says, uh, this is a profile page edit. Uh, that doesn't have exactly what we want, but just make sure that your, your search is Bootstrap 5 profile page snippets. And here on boot day, we'll choose this option, Bootstrap profile examples. Okay, and you see so many examples. Look, look at this, Bootstrap 5 team member details. This is exactly what we're looking for. Look at this one again, Bootstrap 5. Bootstrap with profile data. So like I said, always confirm it's Bootstrap 5. Otherwise, you, you may copy other versions of Bootstrap and mess up. So we we'll click on this. Don't do this, all right? Because I'll prefer that we don't have so much HTML on this uh, on this uh, code. So I just, I'm just teaching you how to get uh, designs without having to build them yourself. Okay, so look at this. If I click on HTML, uh, boom see if I copy this HTML and paste now it's gonna give me what I want but then it also has CSS okay I can copy the CSS and paste so now let's look at creating a CSS if you come to index.html if you come to dating uh, let's start with index in index.html at the top section you see that we imported uh, dating styles okay the base CSS this is a CSS file so in dating, that CSS file is still there. But what if we want a specific one? For instance, we wanted to paste this. All right. So that we can have that design. I think I should just do it temporarily, but I'll delete it because I don't want too much uh, HTML code. So I'll duplicate this line inside dating.css. Don't do what I'm doing. Just watch, okay? Control C, Control V. It's duplicated. I can call this... Uh, the name of this, all right? Dating details. Following convention, right? You remember dating details.css. Then we have to go to the static file, go to styles, and create a dating details so that this will not return an error. Dating. Why do I keep putting it in plural? Dating details. So you have to forgive me for not naming the file singular. Okay, getting details of CSS. Now we have an empty CSS file. So here we can copy it. Copy everything. I wish there was a shortcut. Okay, there is. It says copy it to click clipboard. I've copied it by just clicking there. And we come here and paste Ctrl V. It is pasted. All right. Don't do this. All right, just watch me so that you will uh, get an idea. So we'll come back to getting details HTML inside the body tag. Remember, we created a head navigation and we just wrote something dummy. So here, okay. Here, I'm going to paste the CSS, the whole HTML I'm going to copy here. So, go back. click copy. And uh, come here, paste. Ctrl V, save. And we get back to our app and uh, we're looking for proof dating where is it jungle app we're looking for this meetup not meetup but dating detail dot uh date partner so we're trying to load that dating detail page right 
loaded right make sure that you didn't use facebook like me it's localhost colon 8000 slash dating details and they will put a slug and guess what we have this perfect design look at how beautiful it is now if you're building a website this is how to get really nice designs for your pages all right without having to code it okay since it's html i can now start working on it i could just go for instance in dakota johnson where there's dakota johnson come here look for it okay Dakota Johnson can do exactly this. I say uh, friend dot name. Okay. And oops and below. So uh, essentially, um, I hope we pass this variable correctly into this page. So, but that's just generally how to do that. You can do also the location friend or location. Okay. All right. The way the reason it did not work here is because of something that happened here. So here in our friend, uh, we should have just removed this. We didn't need this. All right. We only needed it in the above. Let me see. We only needed it in the above here where we were. Um, Printing multiple. Um, we is the color bracelets we need um, just for you. Yeah. Okay, save. So now, um, if we come here and refresh, uh, it should just work perfectly. Like I said, um, optionally, you don't really need to do this with me, but as you can see, it has shown the partner, and that's how you can replace everything. So and get a really cool design. Okay. So now what we're going to do is um, let's reverse everything we did and just do a, a really simple page so that it will be easy for you to understand instead of wasting all our time building a complex HTML page like this. Okay, so I'll do Ctrl Z, Ctrl Z, Ctrl Z, Ctrl Z, Ctrl Z, okay, Ctrl Z, Ctrl Z, Ctrl Z, okay, yeah, we're back to what our page used to be. And uh, same thing, you can delete the uh, CSS file, but it doesn't hurt to have it there uh, as long as we disable it here. So here, we're going to comment it out. So click command question mark or control question mark on your keyboard and it's commented out. You save. All right. So uh, let's refresh this page first. Refresh. And yeah, we now have a blank page as expected, except the top navigation. So uh, let's quickly build this page out. I will do uh, div, I'll do container, hit tab. Okay, so now I can do uh, h1, say name, okay, profile name, and uh, do okay, and uh, what do we call it? Um, friend dot name, okay. And then we do the second thing, which is uh, probably just a p tag to say location friend dot location. Okay. And then what else do we do? Another p tag to do description. Description. Okay. Friend dot description. Okay, so now we have the three things we need. Uh, we can also add the ID and the slug or whatever, uh, but it's not really that important. So let's view what we have. I think I sh we should have it in the center too. Text center. Save. Come here, reload, and boom. Yes, this is what I want. Uh, optionally, we could have an image. So I think it's time we talked about um, using images, right? Uh, so here we could um, optionally have an image, I'll do img, img, space, backward slash, and the src equal to column, and then alt. This is basic HTML. Alt could be a slug of the person's name, right? Or whatever. We could just do friend name yeah, as alt. Okay. All right. So as for this, uh, this should point to 
the images remember we have images folder in Arctic okay so we need to just go highlight an image from Google but first of all let's refresh and see what we have here okay good uh, before we even do anything I want this to be pulled down just a little I want some space here so I'll use the bootstrap 5 margin tag remember the margin tag from bootstrap 5 that we could do something like this go and matching top 5 okay we could do that and we do reload and boom it brings it down cool so let's go to google and hijack an image okay now there is a as a web developer you should know places where to get free license free images it's different from just hijacking anybody's image if you're going to build something commercial you should use images that you are authorized to use all right otherwise somebody could sue you especially if you are in countries like um america okay or you use the image of somebody in the same country as you they could see you so okay so here we have a um, uh, let's create this um, pixels pixels is one place where you get license free images pixels pixels okay the best free stock photos royalty free images and videos shared by creators you see has thousands hundreds of thousands of pictures so Let's just say profile picture and these are real people that just uh, snap and upload okay now on that profile picture you can use that we can click on any of these to get more details a portrait or whatever girl all right so we're saying this uh, dude that looks like uh, some programmer that is going to invent something really soon so it looks like John Doe I swear to God it looks like John Doe okay so uh we're going to copy his uh, image address copy image address oh yeah we have to save it right save it in our system and take it to that images folder all right first we need to know where this image folder is okay so uh we right click and see reveal in finder this opens this image folder uh, for us so now we know where it is okay hit um, download save uh images Okay, we'll call it something we can call it John Doe's image okay uh, traditionally you would have uh, hundreds of thousands of profile pictures in that image folder uh, for each new user that uploads a picture so we have John Doe we're assuming that this guy is John Doe okay so it's asking us which folder to save to and uh, if we click here we can start looking for that folder all right that image i'm going to my folder to look for it this is uh, my mac folder your own case in windows uh, just search for the folder where your app is and uh, look for the dating folder and uh, look for the static folder okay look for the static folder and uh, dating folder inside statics the images folder so this is where i'll right click and paste item okay now john doe is now pasted there, pasted there so if we come to our folder now our code editor you see that john doe just appeared there so now we can make reference to it here okay to make it work all we have to do is do the same thing kind of thing we did here okay percentage static and then we sync it so here we want to point this image to here okay so we'll do uh, open and close uh, open and close okay then we we'll do percentage uh, double percentage then here you can say static so um django knows where we're talking about so inside static what happens you go to um dating slash images slash the name of the image john doe dot jpeg dot jpeg okay john doe dot jpeg dot jpeg okay so now we have it this way I have to drag this to this point okay so now we have it this way uh it's easy for us to uh check and refresh okay refresh boom it has appeared john doe john doe okay so let's refresh first just to be sure everything is working fine now it's too big all right so usually using a regular html you can adjust this image but also know that bootstrap has um uh, Bootstrap has classes for working with images, all right? So you can Google that and find classes for 
uh, what, a utility. I think it's called utility in Bootstrap. Utilities for you see background borders, colors, display, flex, whatever opacity, and so on. Okay. So, but we're going to use regular CSS because we don't want to do something really uh, complex. So, we're going to reduce the size of that image and do style. Okay, width uh, 300 pixels. Uh, I have to break this so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, okay. 300 pixels, column height uh, 300 pixels, 250 pixels. Uh, that's just what we need. And um, reload. Click outside the image and reload. Okay, now it makes, it makes more sense. Alright, so we have a details page now. Now, what we're going to do is to link, make it clickable that once somebody clicks uh, this other page uh, from the home page, if somebody clicks something here, it should take to a details page. So, this button on index page, which is view profile, we get there on index page. Where is it? Index and on view profile. Uh, I could search for it. Here, view profile, we could do dating detail slash uh, something like this slog. Uh, no, we call it friend slog, right? Friend underscore slog. You remember in, uh, in view, views here. Okay, we've not renamed it. Okay, we have to rename it, right? Copy friends log. Yeah, change these ones to friends log. And uh, friends log. Friends log. And friends log. Okay, so if we refresh now, same thing looks same, but um, if we click, it brings us here. Okay, if we click, it brings us there. Now, another thing is, I want you to notice what's happening in the URL. So, at the bottom of the screen, I'll try and... If you place a mouse, look at the bottom left of my screen. Bottom left of my screen, if I place my mouse, I don't think you can see it, can you? The very bottom left, okay? You can see here, very bottom left, okay? When I place my mouse here, you see that it's having this log. Dave dash partner. Alright. So that's how to make your URL. Look at this one. It changes to John dash do. The very bottom left of my screen here. See John dash do. And uh, I think there's another way I can show you that. Make sure it's clear. Okay. I got it now. So if I place this, as you can see, uh, look at the bottom left of the screen. It says uh, dating dash detail slash Dave uh, partner. If I place it here, it changes to John do. Place it here. Jane Do and uh, Putin Dash Xi Jing. You understand? So at the end of the day, um, this is how if you're looking at a shopping cart in a website, uh, how each of the URLs are different. Okay, even though they live to the same page, they pass a different value to that page. Okay, so if I click on this now, this uh, slug is passed to here. All right. Look at another interesting concept in Django, all right? Um, if you're, uh, first of all, if you're bootstrap here, the image is still not showing. Now you know how to import images. Well, an interesting concept. So let's go back to the previous screen here on the home page. We reload. You know we still need images for all this, but I'll tell you another way to get uh, uh, dummy images, all right? So, but here, um, if you look at our uh, dating, and not dating but index.html here see how we built constructed this url to make um uh, django know that it should go to slash dating and uh for slash the slog the friend slog but there are better ways to do this all right there are better ways to do exactly this for instance uh sometime what if if tomorrow let's say we are building a, a really large app with um Dating details link all over the place. Let's say the uh, app has hundreds of pages and uh, we have dating details link in about 50 of those pages. 
and one day we wake up one day and say oh this is wrong let's call it view details okay let's say view details what's going to happen is that we have to go through all the hundreds of files we created one after the other to look for view details uh, dating details to change to view details and that's tiring okay that's tiring it's going it could introduce a whole lot of bugs i've seen projects where it is done like that and there was a whole lot of bugs so here's what we do all right um in your old pattern okay your urls pattern uh django allows you to introduce a third parameter here optional third parameter that is called name so that you can give this url a name so here we're going to call this uh dating okay like i said just to follow convention try and name it the same thing and uh here we're going to call this one name sorry name equal to home okay so that if somebody visits for slash home uh if somebody visits just the home page i'll show you how to use it okay so this one will introduce a third parameter that we call oops name equal to we can call this dating detail why not just the same dating detail okay single quotes and then we'll paste it all right so now we have done this we can now get back to index and do something interesting uh let's copy this because we will need it all right we will need this let's copy it out okay so i'm going to remove all of this and say double quotes uh not double but uh percentage url and um we tell it what URL to be. The name of that URL, we called it dating detail. That is the name we have in URL. We just gave it here. So for each of the URLs have a different name. So in this case now, oops, we call this one dating detail. I think I should hit enter and put it in the line here. So we'll call this dating detail. So uh, Django knows to, to load this URL whenever it sees dating detail, right? So if we come here, we're telling it the URL we're talking about is dating detail. And you remember, we have to pass a parameter and uh, this is how to pass a parameter. We're simply saying this is the parameter we need to pass. So just use spaces, spaces, and spaces, all right? And uh, if we come here and reload, we would have, oops, why is it not reloading? So, okay, see, it's still working the same. Uh, just for fun, I want to include the uh, index.h, the images here. All right, so we'll go to details page, copy this image, yeah. copy, control C, just click on a line and control C. Uh, we will copy the line automatically. And then come here, paste under, control V. All right, the reason I paste it pasted it under so that I can transfer the other attributes here. For instance, cut top, uh, transfer it to this. Okay, we're good. Then I can delete this. All right, so what happens is that generally, or basically, we now have this. So it's too long for this page. That's why it's cut out the page. So I'm going to reduce it instead of uh, Okay, so here for slash. So for slash, let's refresh, reload, and boom. Really nice, but it's still too big uh, for this page. So I'm going to adjust some things. Image. Uh, somehow we did not copy the style. So here I'm going to do style. Style equal to uh, width 150 pixels. I don't know, just 200 pixels. And uh, height 200 pixels. Whatever. Okay, reload. Okay, something like this. You know that you can also expand the width just to match the box of the container. Uh, just to have a good design, let's put it at 250 pixels and see if that works. Reload. Okay. Remaining small, uh, 275 pixels, maybe. 275 pixels. Reload. Okay, perfect. 
All right. So I uh, now I know you've seen a number of concepts in Django now, and uh, it makes sense. So uh, let's come tomorrow for any reason we need to change a certain URL. Even if we change uh, what's in us.py, even if we change any of this, it doesn't matter because um, um, uh, Django already knows the name. Django will always use the name as against this other parameter. Okay, so we can always um, modify this parameter anytime. But once we use the an, a route name or a URL name. Django will always use the URL name. It takes precedence, okay? All right, by now you'd have noticed something, and that's that uh, here we're duplicating a lot of code. Remember, don't repeat yourself, right? We're duplicating code because if you look at the code in this index page, all right, it's, it's the same thing. For instance, let's go to the head. All right, this is the head of this index page. All right, if you look at it, you see that it's the same thing with the wall we have in dating details page. Look, it's the same thing. And at the bottom too, you see that we have the last three lines are identical. And at the top two, the body is identical too. So um, since uh, we have, uh, they are very similar, we let, the, let us um, isolate them. All right, so that we can just make reference to them into these pages, okay? Because imagine that we have um, hundreds of pages. Uh, we don't have to repeat all these things. The only difference is here, all right? And this is the only code we need to have in these pages. So what do we do? Inside these same templates, let's create a folder. You can call the folder anything, uh, but I'll call it base, okay? So new folder, base, and then, uh, Inside this base, we'll create a new file. Make sure that the base is inside your dating folder, right? We'll create a new file and call it uh, maybe base.html. Doesn't really matter. Okay, call it anything. Um, in some frameworks, this will be the equivalent of layout.blade.php. Okay. So uh, now we have base. We can copy the things that are similar. For instance, if we we'll come here, all right. We can see that uh, instead of calling it, uh, let's copy here because from now up, up all the way to this place is the same. So we're going to copy it out, cut, all right, for dating, and I go to base and paste it. Okay, now we can start working on some things. Uh, the first thing is um, this title. If we are on the dating details website uh, page, we should the title should read dating details. Okay, what should be here is dating details. Well, if we are on index, the title the title should read something like index or home. All right. So um, Blade provide not Blade now, but um, Django provides you a shortcut to do this, uh, a way to handle this, so that whenever you open this particular one. Uh, that is dating details. Dating details will inject its own title into this uh, framework, okay, or layout page. So now this base dot HTML is like a skeleton that contains the the uh, parts of the your design that are common. All right. So the rest of your pages will be making reference to them. So uh, to do that, since we're in base, we have to tell base that it should expect to get the title. But from any other page it's going to load and don't worry if this doesn't make sense but as we go ahead you will figure out and it makes a whole lot of sense to you all right so this is how it's done it's called block uh, remember that in the blade templating engine that we have uh, we had a blade templating engine and um, not blade but Django Remember when we opened this page in Django, Django template language, if you went all the way down, you will start seeing where they did a lot of things. And one of the things they did was to talk about blocks. Okay. This is a block. Uh, basically they said, this is how to create title. Okay. All right. So let's write some code. So here, put a percentage sign, and then we have to tell 
Django that it's block. Okay, now it's block. We have to call, give it block of words. So we'll say this block is title. So in your template page like this, you can have many blocks. For instance, we're going to see it here, but this is the the, the nav bar. Remember this nav bar? This is the nav bar. We can make it a block too, so that each page will load with it will inject its own different nav bar. But so far in our design, all the pages uh, use the same nav, nav bar. All right, um, I've done block title. That's the name of it, and then you close it. Okay. Then, uh, like in uh, in Django templating engine, you always have to end whatever you start. So we end block. All right. So the next thing is we're going to go to dating uh, details and tell dating details that uh, this is how you're going to inject this title uh, to this page whenever you're loaded. You may be asking, what if um, a page does not inject this? Let's say there is a page we created and uh, we didn't care to inject uh, the title into the main uh, template or the base.html. Uh, there should be a fallback title, assuming this uh, page does not receive uh, a title from the page, the other page it's going to load. All right. So what do we do? We'll give it a fallback title. So in our case, we'll say um, date inside. Okay. So in case there is nothing, it should load this. And another thing we can see that is different is that um, in this page, for instance, we had an extra CSS, right? Even though we commented it out. So some pages in your platform will have extra CSS that should be unique to them. So they should be able to inject that CSS. So let's do the same thing. Um, lazy. So I'll just copy what I did before. We'll do the same thing for CSS right here. So there's a major CSS that everybody gets to use, but then there is an extra that can be injected. So here we're going to do block and we can call it anything site CSS or whatever. Now, what you have to know is that this is a name that will be used by the uh, child pages such, such as dating and uh, index this is the name they have to use uh, to make the injection at this particular location so here uh, we don't need to put anything or we can put okay if there is no injection then use this then okay we, we can actually put it but no need and uh, we can do the same thing here for instance uh, we can inject site title or whatever um, I'll paste, I'll do this, okay, on the nav bar, uh, we can say uh, main heading, whatever you call it, okay, I can still leave it at this inside, okay. Um, this page is not complete, so let's get the remainder of this page. So we hijack the bottom here and uh, copy, and uh, we come to base.html and put it here. So this is the bottom. I'll have to, I would like to move it to the extreme a little. Then this is where the body will be. So what do we do? Uh, we copy what we had before and uh, replace it here. So the rest of the content for each new page we create will be injected here. So what do we call this? We can give it any name. For now, I want to call it body. Okay. All right. So um, you can do the same thing with scripts. Okay. You can do the same thing uh, because in your in your design, sometimes or many times, not even sometimes, many times your designs will have um, each of your pages will have a different JavaScript. Um, or extra JavaScript files they have to use. So we can call this, did I say body? <laughs> we can call this script, scripts, okay? Just like here, site CSS, would have called this styles, whatever, who cares? So just for consistency, we can say site scripts. Okay, so that each new page you visit, if they have a different CSS file, uh, for instance, if you have a page that uh, loads a, an accordion, okay, or slide, picture slide, there might be a, a, a JavaScript uh, CDN 
or scripts that you want to use only on that page all right uh, so you should be able to inject it into the base.html all right so here if we go back to the thing uh, what what thing you notice is that um, uh, the code we now have in dating has just reduced okay so first thing we do at the top is um, to tell it that it should get the rest of the code from somewhere else all right uh, more like it should inject the content of this page into some other file so we want to let it know that so um, here we say extends that's how to do that at the top of the page say extends then you give it the path to what it should extend so we are dating we're extending dating this dating template and uh, slash base all right and um, slash the file called base.html base.html so now it knows that uh, this is it should take the content of this page and insert okay but we're not done yet so we do now we start um listing all the blocks all right so basically we'll have to duplicate all the blocks here the block names so for instance um, we'll copy this all right this is for base.html we'll go back to dating uh, detail at the top here then we can specify what the um page says dating detail so Django already knows that if it sees block title, it should go look for, it should go to this uh, file and look for where it's where there's block title and replace whatever is in between. Okay, we do the same thing for site CSS. Copy it. Make sure it's the same name. Come to paste and uh, paste it. Actually, you can paste it anywhere. It doesn't really matter. But I'm pasting it at the top so it becomes easier to read. All right. Site CSS. Uh, I think here we disabled this because this was a specific css for dating page but i'll copy it i'll enable it control question mark it's enabled then copy control x and we come back to dating site dating site and uh, we paste it inside css so this is a specific css that will be injected for this page only and uh, we go back to base HTML, uh, the site title, dating site, okay. And we we'll come back here and uh, specify what the site title is. Okay, our profile details, who cares? Um, I hope I hope you know that you can also put um, some of these. Um, you can put a variable in, inside here too, with double curly bracelets. Some people will prefer to uh, have these blocks uh, vertically like this. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it just makes it easier to read, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we'll go back to the base and uh, which other else? Which other thing? Uh, the real copy um, block body block. So we'll come here and say body so we'll wrap the rest of the content inside body right okay so uh, finally here is scripts but we don't have any script here so if we had we'll just um, insert it but we don't have so it's okay to leave it like that so what we're going to do now is to go and check all right make sure that our server is running then we go check if our code is working properly all right so we'll come back to our website and uh, reload mm. boom we have a slight error and what's the error about so let me zoom in it says uh, invalid block tag for static end block did you forget to register or load this tag good the reason for this error is simple it's saying that um, Invalid block tag on line eight um, uh, static expected end block. All right. So here's what it means. It means that here in base.html, the very first line here is load static. All right, uh, because we used it to make a call to a CSS file. So in dating, we're making a call to. We're using it to make a call, but we're not loading it. Okay. So that's not good. 
Uh, so we have to include it static, all right? I'll give space so that it becomes easier to read. So this way, I uh, just know that the first line in your code will always be extends the the uh, template it's extending. So this concept in Django is called template inheritance. Okay, where one a file inherits the design of another file. Okay, so if we get back now, we can reload, and boom, you see it works. So if I zoom in, zoom out, so it says dating details because we want dating detail page, and says um, the title of the page, and everything works perfectly as normal, but it now reads dating details. So let's go back to home. You see that home has a slightly different design now because we've not included it. So let's take out a few seconds to do the same thing. Uh, usually, I don't want, I don't like to repeat myself. So I'll just copy everything from here all the way up, and then come to index and uh, scroll down in the navigation from navigation all the way up. Paste. Okay. Now I've pasted it. What I'm looking for right now is um, here, title, I would say dating home, okay? And here we don't need it, I'll copy it out, cut it out. So we don't have any unique CSS for our home page. And what else do we have? Dating details, main heading, dating site. Uh, welcome to our dating site. Uh, what else? I think the main heading should be here. Here, I'm going to replace this. I'm going to paste this here and say whatever. Welcome to uh, data never fail this way. Or whatever it is it doesn't really matter i just know that you already know the concept here you don't have to waste too much time and uh finally at the bottom we'll make sure that um at the bottom of dating site we'll copy what we have here we'll make sure that the the body and block is there so let's you know remove this last three and uh, put this okay all right, so let's try and see how it goes. Okay, so it has this cover people here. Oh, big mistake by me. But uh, at least now you see how it goes. So here, I made a mistake of injecting this. We don't really need it. So get back to where it was. Remove this. So if you're wondering how I'm removing it, it's by clicking the line and pressing ctrl x x for xylophone okay it's basically cutting the line but it removes it for me so here remove h h1 tag and remove h2 tag okay so if we come here we'll see let's cover people i still want to change it to a home page i'll say welcome to home We're not designing the best site in the world. This course is just showing you around how to use um, Django. Okay, now you understand very perfectly well. Now, another thing we could do is to uh, isolate chunks of code, chunks of our code, all right, and put it reusable chunks of code. For instance, if we have five, 10 different pages that uses um, a list like this, for instance, this one is uh, discover people, Another page that uses something similar could be your list of friends. Another uh, page could be pending friend requests. All these kinds of pages, they use the same kind of design. So what do we do? We take that design out into a separate file so that anytime we need it, we just make a reference to it and then pass in the variables we need and then it will generate um, the page for us. Okay. Uh, it may not make sense now, but once we do it just like this one, it's going to make a whole lot of sense. So we need to create a folder where we store reusable chunks of code. 
that we're going to be reusing throughout our website. All right, the, the way to do that is exactly the way we did the other one. So we still come to our page here under templates dating where we created base. We also have to create another file. You could call yours anything, but I'll call mine includes. So it shows me the list of files that I have to that's the folder that will contain list of files I have to include. So I'll right click create a new file. So um, I could for call this anything, but I could call this a uh, profile picture card. Okay, profile picture card. Oh, profile card. Let me call it profile card. Okay, profile card. Card dot html. So inside includes, I now have an empty file. So what do we do? Uh, we go to dating details you know this code right it's reusable it's repeating so much right so we don't have to and we could use it in other page designs that's the idea so let's copy it out and uh, so that we can include it in any page we need it so we'll go to dating details this is a chunk of code we're talking about so i'm going to remove it from here cut um is this it no not dating details but um index Okay, in index, we have this for loop that is looping through to produce this four times, okay? Uh, because uh, we have four friends. So we copy out this code, knowing that uh, we can use it somewhere else. So we'll go to picture profile card and just dump it, okay? Paste. Now we've pasted it, we can get right back to where we copied it from and use include. So this double percent sign, and say include all right space dating slash includes slash uh, what what do they call it profile card profile dash card dot html so this way now if you take a look uh, at our index page look at what it looks like now right we're making reference to uh, base.html and we're injecting a lot of things from this index to base but also we are pulling in information all right we're pulling in information to from another file so in a real life uh, coding scenario you would have one page pulling in information from several different files okay so this page now will pull information from here and then somewhere down again it pulls information from there so at the end of the day what you have is a small short file that is very easy to read and if you want to debug anything you know exactly where to go find it so let's go refresh to be sure that our code worked properly and uh, we reload and of course it says the same static okay we know exactly how to sort out this static issue so um we still copy static from any of the pages where we already have it and then we'll go back to profile card and uh, right there at the top you know why it's complaining of static because we used it to make a reference to the image here we use static here to make a reference to the image okay so i'll save and uh reload and boom it works well now but this each of this information is being fetched from somewhere else okay which also means that if we find ourselves in a place like a uh, view profile we find ourselves here we can actually print people's profiles here by just making a reference to that uh, profile picture uh, code piece of code okay now the issue is for each page that wants to use this file they will have their own um, variable that contains the information they want to display all right for now for instance here in the home page it's displaying list of uh, random people to date right but inside profile details page it may display list of your friends we may need it to display list of your friends so somehow we need to pass in the value the variable of what to display here like this particular thing we need to pass it in from the file that is calling it so for index all right 
we are calling it list of friends we need to find a way to pass in list of friends into this file so this file knows what variable to use to generate those uh, lists then if you're calling it from dating details page for instance we need to pass in whatever variable in dating details page is called friend so if we're making a call to profile card from dating details page we need to pass in the variable it should use here so that's the concept i want to show you now all right so um in this profile card let's um just give it a name a uh, more generic name you can leave it like this way so but let's start with leaving it this way we'll copy this variable and uh, in any file that is calling it like here you can just tell passing a, a variable with this you say with you mention the variable and put equal sign and then mention the variable okay so this second variable is this variable that is available on this page and this first variable is what it should be used to identify it in profile card so for instance in profile card if we just say, say friends array assuming we change it to friends array okay doesn't really matter but assuming we change it to friends array that means here where we were making reference to it we have to call this friends array so friends array is equal to a list of um, friends and if you have more variables you can just put a space and keep uh, adding them like this whatever whatever is equal to whatever 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 them is equal to like that that's how um python and, uh, and django does their uh, variable injection so here let's uh refresh just to be sure i think we should be at the home page right refresh you see it works perfectly perfect all right guys in this lesson we are going to be talking about sqlite all right sqlite is a special kind of database that is simple lightweight and easy to use but then uh, it doesn't have to be hosted somewhere else you know normally if you're building your application you write your code in your system but then you need a separate app to manage your database so in reality uh if you build for instance um a school management software you need a separate app like your PHP my admin to manage your database using SQL all right and then when you host it you host your file separately and then you host the uh, database separately okay even in your cPanel but uh, SQLite is very small light and straightforward that allows you to host your rela uh, relational database uh, to run your relational database without having to uh, host a special database okay so sqlite comes with a lot of browsers in fact all browsers these days and then you can also download it separately and install it into the app that um, you're working with so the database lives and resides inside the application okay uh, that you're working with so um uh sqlite database the light there means that is lightweight okay so it's that easy uh we're gonna use it now but um i want to let you know that many legal many uh industry standard applications will not use it for serious projects maybe to save one or two things but if you are building a school management platform all right or a church management platform or some dating website you wouldn't use sql lite all right because of all the many information you want you need something robust not lightweight okay that's when you start talking about postgres start talking about a whole lot of other uh, databases and systems but since this is a beginner tutorial i want to start with sql lite just so if you ever need it and uh, it's one of the basic things you have to know all right so uh, let's start with it django comes pre-installed with sql lite okay comes pre-installed and pre-set up so let's look at some how to set up uh, SQLite. Now, why do we need a, a database? Because here we are writing these things manually. All right, we need to be able to make the app work automatically, where people just uh, we can retrieve this information from the database. All right, so uh, we have to get rid of this system and make a call to the database here. So, but to do that, I want you to look here. Look at this SQLite. Three, okay. Django already created an SQLite tree uh, 
for you all right a file where you can write your code okay now django also comes with models.py look at this models.py came with django all right so um we're gonna write some code inside django models.py all right uh remember that it's the one inside uh, your dating or your the app you're working with see okay models.py so this is where you write the instructions on what your database should look like okay this is where you create your fields your tables now if this is the first time you're ever building a website some of these things i'm saying might be just a little strange but just like every other thing we've done so far in this tutorial don't worry by the time we're done uh it's gonna make a lot of sense all right okay so we have to create a class okay a class that class has to be the name of the table we want to work with. So we're going to say uh, that our table name is dating. Okay. And then you must write this inside models.model. Okay. We're going into models and then we're pulling out model. Okay. Um, then you start like this. Then you start mentioning the fields you need in that table. So if we look at um, this, the fields we need is ID name country description friends love so uh for now i will skip id but i'll put name country description and friend slog okay so we'll get back to models.py we'll say name uh equal to then we'll say what the name should be uh car field okay i'll cover this better much better uh if this is confusing you it's perfectly fine but i'll cover it much better when we are dealing with um and MySQL, all right. Uh, another type of more robust database that is used all over the world, even by Facebook. Facebook was originally built in MySQL, uh, all right. So um, models dot char field that max uh, here say um, max length. Uh, let's say two hundred. The person's name cannot be more than two hundred characters. Okay. Uh, uh, friends log right friends log the quarter models that slot field okay unique what is true so basically what we're saying is uh, these are just like variable types uh, variable types for the field so we're saying that in the name field uh, we expect to have a character or a string okay a string that has a maximum length of 200 and in the friends log we expect to have uh, a slug field remember it must be slug it must have dash dash in between and it must be unique that's basically what we're saying here so description now another thing is uh, just like in programming you don't need to memorize this you can always google to find uh what to use the description right did i spell it well description okay models dot so when you put dots you'll see a whole lot of other suggestions so what we're looking for here is text field all right text field so we're saying that this is going to be a very uh what the text area like in html okay so text fields don't have a line then we need country too right uh we need country we're going to do the same thing for here and say country has to be country right so we're good so now we've saved it we have to run a migration migration is uh, basically your your django will create files that um has details of your database all right so it will these are files that track the changes you make to this uh database all right so just understand it that way for now but uh eventually it will make more sense to you so if you come to this folder you will see that uh there are uh there is a folder already waiting for you to create migration and so we're going to run we're going to end stop our server control control c to stop the server and then let me do clear okay so now we're going to write a code okay that um manage the pi manage the pi okay python 3 make sure it's python 3 that you're using Python 3, manage.py, run migrations. 
to it. You wait a little and keep your eye here. Say that um, I think I made a mistake in the the actual right command is make migrations, not drop run migrations. We have to make migrations first. So instead of run, we have to do make first. Okay, make migrations. And hit enter and uh, keep your eye on this folder. You see. Okay, done. So it's telling us that it's created a folder at dating migrations. Okay, migrations. It's created a, a file named 001.py. Okay, 001.py. This file. Let's take a look at what's inside. Just out of curiosity, right? So, like I told you, we skipped ID, right? But it created it for us, you see? That's why we skipped it. So, the ID will always be a unique field. Okay, uh, primary key. Okay, it's auto created as you can see. So this gives like a skeleton of what our database looks like. As at look at it, uh, that's why it's number zero zero one. If we do another migration, let's say we modify the database and add another field instead of description. Let's say we add another field about age. We run another migration. It will create another version and call it zero zero two. So now it knows what our database used to look like. And what it looks like now all right so this is actually great when you're working with uh, people on the same project so if somebody from your other team in the other country makes a change to the database now you can see it you just have to come and run your own migrations and uh, the change will be updated in your own version of the app okay so just know that migration concept is not a hundred percent compulsory but it's a very very powerful and important uh, skill to have okay uh, so let's continue after we've run the migration. Um, let's do some magic. We are getting close to where Django is really, really powerful. Okay, if you've been finding this whole uh, stuff a little slow, the whole tutorial, now you will start enjoying it. So here we have DB SQLite 3. As you can see, it's an empty file. So here, let's run a command. So uh, we have created these files. Now we have to insert the details into a database. Okay, so. Um, Basically, let me clear this so you can see. So now we can say the same thing, okay? Python 3 manage pi, but this time around we'll do migrate. Okay. So what a Django is gonna do is go to this migrations file, okay? Uh, migrations file, and uh, look at what's here and insert it into the SQLite database. So this becomes a real table with real fields, okay? All right. If you don't understand what that means, don't worry. We're gonna show you. So hit here. Um, do your Python 3, manage.py migrate, hit enter, and uh, boom. Know that this is just one table. In a real life application, you have many tables. For instance, the application I, I was just working on has 73 tables. So you have 73 of these. One could be dating, one could be football, one could be this, that, 73. Okay. All right. So as you can see, it has run the migrations. So in that case, if you run migrate, it will migrate all the files that you have, all of the tables. Now, but what what just happened it doesn't really show us anything but if we come to db dot um, sqlite you see that it has put something here say so this file is not displayed in order in the editor because it's either binary or uses an unsupported text encoding okay do you want to open it anyway no we don't want to open it okay but just know that this data has been installed here so this database is now living inside our application all right unlike um Reb some of that uh, if you're using some other database where you have to go to PHP my admin the database lives outside okay so the next powerful thing we're going to do is let me show you something if you go to alls.py is it uh, no if you go to alls.py on the uh, Django side all right alls.py you see that uh, Django came def by default okay predefined with an admin feature look at this so they have already coded some sort of an admin backend for us Okay, I'm just waiting for us to log in and uh, start using it. So what we do, we'll go to our site dash slash admin. Okay, so our site is localhost uh, colon 8000. Uh, localhost colon 8000. 8000, 8000. Okay, slash admin. Now the issue here is that we need to run our server, right? So here, I'll do another clear. Clear. Okay, let's run our server. Okay, do you remember how to run it? Python 3, 
uh, manage dot pi um, server okay enter and uh, boom our server is up at localhost 8000 okay now we can now visit slash admin if i hit enter and boom so first of all first things first uh what you have to note is that um this uh this page uh, may have been dark it could be dark because of my system settings my macbook is set to dark team maybe that's why this page is that dark okay so if yours is light uh don't worry it's okay all right so now but we don't know the username and password this is a secret admin login back end for you it's not for your users all right so only you can access this now even if your users know this uh this URL, even if they type your website.com slash admin and they land here, uh, they still can't log in because they don't know the uh, username and password. Even you at this point, you don't know the username and password, but we'll have to generate it, right? So we'll go back here. I'll run another clear. Oops, our server is on, so I have to exit the server. Control C. Okay, then run clear. Okay, cool. So let's create a super user. So the same thing, Python manage.py this command creates creates super creates super user so that's the ultimate command for creating a super user all right so you just hit enter and um, it says uh it asks you some questions username leave blank to use mac okay no i'm not gonna leave blank i will use uh dave partner that's the username to log into the admin Email address real dave partner at gmail.com. Okay, say password. I'm going to say, uh, what else? Dave partner is my password. Okay, enter. so it said password again, just to be sure I remember it. I'm just typing, uh, the password is too similar to the username. <laughs> Yeah, that's true because I was just using the partner. Okay, by pass password validation and create your user anyway. Yeah, it's better. Password validation. Super user created. Okay, now we can run our server. I'll press up arrow key. Okay, it will show you the pass commands that you ran before. Okay, run server. Now remember our username and password, right? So remember the one you use for yours. If we come back here, we can enter it username and password. All right. Entered it and I've logged in. Okay, I've logged in. Look at what the admin back end of Django looks like. Okay, just take a look. Django administration and it says uh, there are groups and then there are users. I still I can add a user and add a group. Okay, my actions non available site administration. So here at the top, uh, look at at the top. Okay, it says um, visit website. Uh, calls my name. Let me zoom in. Visit websites, change password, and logout. So these key core features are already here uh, for me. And here it also says this thing. I can create a group and I can create a user. All right. But the challenge is that we don't have our dating here. All right. Remember, we have a dating model we created and created a table with a, a whatever, but we don't have it here. So what we have to do. Is to import it so we have to tell python or uh, and uh, django to show it so if we go to this admin.py that's what it is for say register your models here so we have to register them okay we'll say from models okay from models import we now uh, tell it the name of the model to import remember our model is named uh dating right so import data basically uh we're talking about this migration see model name create model dating so basically that's what that's what we're doing here in admin.py so we import that model and then we have to register it okay so i think i would have this here so that all the imports will be together at the top everything i want to import so register model here good so we do admin to register it admin.site dot register okay we now tell it what to register in this case data okay save and uh, make sure our server is running and 
if we now come here and reload, you see, the dating has appeared. So why is it dating? Because by convention, all right, by convention, your database tables should be in plural because it's saving, uh, the database will be saving multiple items. Remember when I told you about plural? So uh, here, for instance, here in in it uh, in the migration file. So we are going to save so many dating here. We're going to save so many users here, right? So the first one could be Dave, second one could be Xi Jinping, third one could be Putin, and a whole lot of my other rich friends like Obama, you know? So we can save a lot of uh, uh, records here. So that's why the database name should always be in plural. And, um, and uh, Django is already helping you to do that. You see, that's why groups is in plural users. So anybody that sees it instantly knows that this is a table. Okay. But fields themselves shouldn't be in plural except in specific cases. Here's what I mean. You can't have names here. You shouldn't, not can't. You can do anything you want. You can't have countries here. Okay. Uh, you should have name. All right. Singular. So that uh, somebody will know that to expect one name. Okay. Country. Uh, one country is expected. Okay. Description. One description is ex expected. Okay. But there could be specific incidences where you have to have plural here, like spices. Okay, then it means that you have to put multiple spices with comma or whatever. All right. So, but generally the field names are singular and the model name is singular, but then the table name on the database is plural. Okay. So now let's add a, a record. Remember we had a record here where we had, um, we had a record. Do you remember? We had a record in views here. We had four records. Okay, the first one was um, Dave Partner Nigeria, the best programming tool in the whole world. In the whole wide world. Okay, then Dave Partner slot. All right. So we have um, name Dave Partner country, the great country of Nigeria. Okay, or UAR. In case you don't know, um, an alternative name for Nigeria is UAR, like you have Yankee for US, okay? UAR, United Arab Cable and Republic. It's like street name, not like official, right? United Arab Cable and Republic. You can Google the name of our Cable all right? So um, I could say UAR and I could say friends log should be something, so do Dave. Partner, okay, and then description greatest tutor in the world. Unlock, all right. So, here we say, look at this it says save and add um, another, save and continue editing, and then save. Very interesting. You can just save. So, I'll say save and add another. So, I can add John Doe. So, John Doe, okay, his country is uh, let's say Nigeria, and uh, friends log is John Doe. John Doe description, the beautiful husband of young Mary, okay, or Mary. Jane Doe. Okay, good. So save and add, save and add another. Okay, let's try save and continue editing so you just get an idea of what it is. But look at this. So the dating object was added successfully. You may add another dating below. You know this is a this is not a, a great um, what do you call it? This is really not a great information uh, way to display the data. I could have just said the record was added. So I will leave this for you to figure out how to change it. Okay. All right. Otherwise, we'll change it further down in the tutorial. So save and continue editing. I want to use all the options so you see. So I've saved it. And it has shown it to me again to edit. So if I just uh, add another description here, I can say save and add another or save and continue editing. Okay. So let's try one more time and say Jane, though the country is Siberia. Okay. And then friends log. Let's make a mistake and just add Jane space though. Remember, it's supposed to be slog. And uh, we enforced it. Or well, let's say the wife of the estranged John Doe. Okay. 
save and add another let's see what happens boom say so please correct the error why because it's supposed to be a slog so how did it know because here we already told it that it has to be a slog okay models.py we said it has to be a slog field this one can be string this one can be string this can be a slog field and this is text field which is text area that's why it knew okay so if you don't make that mistake now another thing is that it must be unique. Remember here, in models of pi, we said it has to be unique, right? Good. So let's try and create save, save, save another, right? Let's try and create a button. She, Jane. Okay. And um, what is the country of Putin? The country of Putin is Georgia. Okay. And then. Um, friends log let's use something that has already been created before and say this is the leader of the programmer republic in georgia okay and we say save and continue and see what our save and add another save and continue let's see what boom error you see why because it's also it expects it to be unique so we do button we can we can just leave one word hope you know the only thing is that if you have to add more than one word they must be separated by um by a string what if we try a capital letter let's say putting she okay save and continue uh, boom it's saved successfully all right so now if we get back to here we can see that if we click patents now we have four dating objects okay this is not really a good design like i said we have to change it but um it shows us the id one two three four so if we click on one it shows us this you see that's beautiful isn't it uh, and we can always click here to add more and uh, so on all right notice that it has created a users default users and default groups tables for us so now we have created our database and we can see it's from the django admin section now, um, we need to start fetching the data from the database and displaying to our homepage. Look at this, it says visit site. So if I right click here and open a new page, now we can see the front end of our site. So this is what our users see. But remember that this data is dummy, all right? So now we want to fetch it from the database, right? So how do we go about it? It's uh, fairly simple. Uh, we get back to our code. And then we go to views.py, okay? So I'm going to do this down. And I'm going to, okay, good. So now in views.py, you see that we are creating dummy data here. No, we don't, we no longer want to do that. So, but before we go ahead, we have to import uh, the meetup model, say from dot model uh, import uh, data, okay? So we've imported the data, now we can use it. So these guys have to go. So we can say uh, dating.models. We'll now tell it uh, dating.objects, okay? Objects. So we tell it what we want. We want to fetch all the data in the database. This is what it means, okay? Like I said, you don't really have to ever memorize all this. Uh, you just do a lot of Googling. But um, this course is to show you what's available. So you can always Google how to fetch all data from SQLite using Django. Boom, you'll see it. Okay, so here we'll do return. Now we've fetched it. Okay, so we, I think we already have return here. We can... We don't really need this, but uh, who cares? We can remove it, but who cares? Okay, so we fetched it and we're passing it here and it's perfect. So let's check whether it works and uh, whether we have to adjust something. Reload. Everything works so far. Okay. So how do we know that things are working? Uh, let's cross check by going to uh, database and changing one name. So this is a uh, Putin Jin Chain. Let's change it to Obama. Ryla Obama. Ryla Obama. Okay. So we save. So I've clicked save. Go change it to Ryla Obama. And if we come here and reload, let's see whether we're going to see that. 
and I don't think we saw it. So let's conf confirm uh, what the issue is. So if you ever have issues like this, like I told you earlier in the course, if you ever have issues like this, first things first, you will restart your server just to be sure that your server is not the problem because this server caches file. A cache, see, this is what I mean, cache. Okay, so basically it, what it means is that it um, saves the files so that it doesn't have to keep fetching them every time it wants to serve them. So it creates a copy of the file and that's what it displays to the user so that it can display it fast whenever the user clicks to load a page. Which means if there's a new update in the file, it may not display often. So let's stop our server first, Ctrl C and clear. Okay, I have to always clear so that it will come up so that you can see it. So clear. Now we can uh, try to run the server again. Up arrow, up arrow, enter. Okay, so let's try and run the server again, reload, and see what happens. Okay, good. Now we're sure that the server is not the problem. Actually, our server was the problem. Our code was working correctly, so I refreshed a couple times and it showed. If you try this point and it doesn't show, like I said, the server saved your, is saving this file as it was before you made that update. Okay, the reason it's saving it is so that it will be faster when next you want to visit this page. Now the server does not take note of the fact that you have already changed the source of information to this page. So if yours is not working, you can change the name of this variable and change it here to, for instance, I can just put friends, okay, and then put another S. Now it's, it's changed, then I can also change it here, S. Okay, now we have plural, if we come to the index, where we're looking, we can say we're looking from XS, friends, and that's it. Uh, the server will instantly know that this is a new variable and uh, try to load it properly. Okay, of course, once it has loaded properly, as you can see, we now have Rilo Obama. If we go to the, uh, if we go to the admin and change another one, let's say here, we say uh, Donaldo, Donaldo, save, click the save and uh, come here. One of these, John Doe should change to Donaldo, the reload, boom, Donaldo, okay? So same thing with the, the uh, descriptions here. So once you have changed the variable and it starts working, uh, you can optionally change it back, all right? I can change it back. Now the server has picked it up. I can go to views and uh, just make sure my code is clean. Change it back. So now the next challenge is to fetch only one information. Remember we did fetch all here. So here we want to fetch only one information and we're going to pass friends log as the unique key to go find it from the database. Uh, for the next one, uh, we're still in views.py, okay? Uh, we are in dating detail. So instead of all this, we're just going to say friend is equal to, remember, um, dating, the dating model, right? Dating dot objects, then um, dot get. So this is how you get one information. So now we're going to say the friends log field in the database should be equal to what is passed in here, this friends log that we receive as a parameter here. Okay, remember when people click on the link, this link now, it contains the friends log. All right, so the friends log is passed in through the URL and we're saying that that detail that is passed in through the URL should be equal to this particular field in the database. So just go, basically go to the database, find where this friends log is. Autom alternatively, you can use the uh, ID field because it's also unique, all right? So once we do that, uh, we can check whether it worked by just clicking here. And it says the partner, right? And if we go back and click Donaldo, say Donaldo, it, it works perfectly well. We go back and click uh, Jendo, say Jendo, okay? And finally, Ryla Obama, it says Ryla Obama. Now, another thing we can do is to work on this, uh, on this location. Uh, let's go to dating details and look for the location. So why is the location not shown? Is it country? I think it's country that we put there, right? Save. So if we refresh, it says Georgia. That's beautiful, isn't it? It is amazing. So let's do something interesting here, which is to add a, um, let's add 
um, icons okay to make this site look a little better so for instance in here we need to add an icon we need to add an icon for location so to add an icon you just google bootstrap icon cdn cdn is content delivery network so as you can see bootstrap icons it's on blog.getbootstrap.com so if we click on it and uh, it opens we're looking for a, a url to start with okay um, there are 60 icons where is the cdn here perfect so i've seen it here option one include so we just copy this copy it so if you if you if you know how to add icons this wouldn't be new to you so we'll go and add it in the base where is it that's the head section the head section of the base somewhere here where we're adding all the star sheets we can add it to so i've pasted it and it's saved okay so it's pasted here now the next thing we want to do is uh now we can use it all right so you can also in, in, install it via npm okay and you can use it in designs like figma in case you don't know, I have a figma course on my site printm.org okay so uh the next thing we want to do is um to look for the icon page okay yeah that's it that's it so any of the icons you want in this case here we want to put icon of marker it's called marker so um over time you will get to memorize the names of these icons okay so the one we are looking for is called marker so i'll do ctrl f on my keyboard ctrl f and search for map first to see whether there is one on map. Look at the one on map. This is something on map. No. We're looking for something on marker. Okay. Marker. And we don't have it. So let's search for location. Okay. Cool. I searched for flag and I saw something I could deal with. So you click on it. Once you click on it, it opens a new page and gives you what to paste. So here I can click this and it gives me what to paste all right so with this now i've copied it i've clicked here to copy it. so i can come to my code and look for the dating detail under location i can just do like this okay so i've pasted it so if we come to our code now keep your eye here and reload and boom see it shows up so it's still loading okay see it shows up all right so um you can do more you can do more like um for this Ryla guy you can do um let's go back i've gone back to the main page so in case you are looking for this page it is called icons.bootstrap getbootstrap.com so we'll look for user usually if you know what you're looking for like if you don't know any of these names you can search for it so we can use any of these but i can search for user ctrl f user oops ctrl f user okay so where is it uh user does not exist i can say person person okay now we have person cool so i'll click on person and it opens uh, and then i'll click here to copy then i'll go back to my code and then here i'll add person whatever doesn't matter so instead of putting name or add icon person save compare refresh and boom we have it so that way and uh, one thing you have to know is that it's fetching this permission from online so your you, your system has to be online for it to show if you ever open your system and it's not showing it's because your system is not online okay even the bootstrap we added is fetching the information online all right so this is how you're going to add um a lot of all this let me even add it on the home page just go to the home page index look for profile card look for the name right and, add it. and then save come to index and also get the one for location where are the details location okay cool we'll add it you know another thing you can do is to actually isolate this one to another page all right like we did here so description we never had no location here so we can have location let me paste this here 
and uh, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, and change this to location, country, sorry, and then copy this, uh, Ctrl X, and add it here, and boom, we do it. So here, I can reload. Again, like I said, our server is always having issues uh, with this uh, and we can do what we did before, which is simply go to the data database here and try and change the, the wordings, okay? Change the wordings or you restart your server, anyone that works for you better, come here and change the wordings to this. As you can see, as I'm changing it, the, the server is restarting itself, you see? So it works now, right? Ryla Obama, and then it has all these um, icons, and you can even put icons on these ones, and you'll be fine. In case you've not noticed, um, when we click on this, it loads, look at this, let me click on Donaldo. Look at the URL. It loads Donaldo, what? It passes in uh, Donaldo, uh, slug as a variable. What if we? What if we write something that doesn't exist? What if I put nine nine and hit enter? Boom! There's an error. So we don't want our user to ever see any of these errors like this. No. Okay. So we are going to fix it, which means if we come to our views page where we are displaying the page. Look at these views. The reason that error exists is because we're trying to find a slug that doesn't exist. Do not nine 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 nine. We're trying to query the database. It doesn't exist, so it spits out the error. So uh, we're going to do something smart here by saying, um, try, first of all, try to fetch the information from the database. If that doesn't work, then we do exception, all right? We do accept. Okay, so if you try that and it works, also return this. So I'm gonna copy this now and say here, enter, paste, control B, leave this. Okay, so if we try and it works, fine, return this. Otherwise, what do we do? We do accept, accept, okay? So that is try catch for you in Python. So any exception at all, catch it and uh, as error or whatever. This is a variable, catch the exception and um, define it as a variable. And um, what, this is what you would do if you encounter an error. So display another different page. So I'll copy this because I'm lazy. So we're going to say display the same page, the original uh, page, but this time around, uh, passing an error, error message. We can say um, dating found, pass it to false, uh, which means somewhere here we can do dating found true. Okay, here, we do um, dating found true. So the idea is that in this index in this dating uh, details page, we can use an if statement to either display the contents of the dating page or display an error message saying, hey, what you wanted was not available. Here, we can finally go to our dating details page. And before we spit out this to display it, we can use, um, we can use uh, an if statement, okay? So we can say, a percentage sign we can say if uh, dating detail is found that is if dating detail is true then display this we do end if okay percentage and if now I have to confirm that I use plural here okay so if we go to views we see that it's dating found sorry not dating details okay so here here we say if dating found Okay, this, this means that the dating, uh, the result was fetched from the database, but also we want to display an error message if it's not found. So we're saying if it is found, fine, display this. But if it's not found, we want an error message. So uh, let's do two things first. We'll do an else here, right? Do this and uh, percentage sign and say else, okay? Good. So else do what? First of all, we're going to do a H1 tag saying sorry uh, no results found for this log or whatever page not found 404 404 page not found whatever 
So we'll do it this way. And if we come here, and since we created a, a, an imaginary slug that doesn't exist, if we refresh, it does this. Oh, our server is down. Our server is down. Okay, let's confirm why. So uh, it's telling us uh, you should be able to read the server errors though. It's trying to force us to use something called finally because you have try except finally. Finally is supposed to be optional. So it's saying on this file, views.py on line 30, that it's expecting, okay, expected except or finally. So I think I misspelled something there. Except, I got it. So what's the challenge now? What's the challenge? Return, I got it. So. So I think it's the spacing that I, I missed. Maybe I have issues with the proper space. So it's working well. I just um, wedged off. I just returned to where I was and it's working perfectly well. Okay. So here, let's see what this new error is saying. It's saying, could not pass the remainder found from dating farm. Okay, I think um, another thing we can do is to use an underscore to avoid a to avoid that kind of error underscore okay so it doesn't see it as two different words uh where are we here in details dating detail right we can see that here okay let me just space this out dating underscore found okay all right so reload and see what happens good see sorry no result for this block found slot found Another thing we can do, like I wanted to do, is to format this error properly. Uh, I can just copy the whole of this, all right? Paste here. Delete everything inside, okay? And then paste this one. Just so that the page will look good when we reload it. Reload, and boom, it's in the center now. Uh, another thing you can do is to serve a different page. For instance, we're still serving the same page uh, here. We're saying if this doesn't work, serve this, all right? And the, as you can see here is the same page that has been served. So you could have a specific special 404 page, all right? You can have your own 404 page that has a different design um, that you can always serve. And uh, you can just fix it in, uh, in base or anywhere. Just create a 404 page so that whenever there's an error, you can serve it, okay? Now another thing is you can actually pass in the error message. So you can say error underscore message and then do uh, error. So this message here, we can pass it in, save and come to getting details and display it. So we can say uh, key type, we can say um, error. So just display the error to add the error message and so we'll reload. So uh, it's not displaying any error message, but um, that's just how to pass the error message. Let's do another magic, which is uh, let's say somewhere you're building your app and you got to a point where you really need to add an extra field. You want to modify the way that your database looks like. Okay, so let us go to models.py and add an image field. In case you've not noticed, we're using the same image for everyone, okay? Everyone using the same John Doe image, but we want to use something different for each person. So here, we go to models.py, now we want to mod modify our model, okay? We'll say images, okay? Our image, image, all right? And then we'll do models dot image field. So Django has that, all right? So in case you want to know everything that Django has for you, if you type models, you hit dot and it shows you everything here not much all right the different kind of fields you could use different kinds of fields so in this case if you type i it shows us image field okay all right so um we can give it some instructions of on the kind of things that can be here it's already hinting us what we should give it so we'll do upload upload underscore to okay images all right so we're telling it the folder where to upload the image. So when you want to upload it, an image in Django, Django will take the image from any location on your hard drive or your phone and go and save it in another folder. 
inside the project okay so in this case we're trying to save it inside the images folder that we had uh, inside static okay we had static right uh, inside dating we had static so this is the folder we're trying to route it to all right so Django will take the, the file from anywhere on your computer where you selected it. Like when we downloaded the John Doe image, it will, we downloaded it into our downloads folder. Then we manually copied it into static images. But this time around, Django will do that automatically for you. But then Django will copy the URL because the address of the image, all right? The static slash images slash the name of the image and save it into the database. So you don't save images in your database, right? If you do that, your database will be overwhelmed too quickly. It will be full too quickly, all right? So you only save the address where the image is saved. So, uh, but the actual image will be saved on, in a folder, all right? So now, but also we need to also do some settings to let Django know uh, where this image is so that Django can be able to find it. Now, if you copy this, uh, all right? Django Docs, all these things are in Django Docs. If you want to know modifications, you can do so. If you copy this one and uh, go to Django, you will see that uh, go to website, internet, and paste it. Okay, paste and go. You will see uh, that, that Django already has a lot of settings and details on how you can set up a lot of things, including images. All right, so if you control F and get to the images section, you'll see a lot of settings. So um, the variables I'm trying to type now, I'm not making them up, all right? The two settings, uh, the first one is media underscore root, right? Media underscore root and equal to uh, base directory. I'll show you what that is. Then uh, in this case, if we don't want to use this, we could use static slash images, but also I just want to create a new uh, a folder all together so I'll call that folder uploads okay uh, in case you're wondering what this base directory means it's just the address to this base uh, root folder because if I if you come at the top here they define the base directory the parent folder which is the whole of this folder right so like this is base directory all right so we get back to our get back to our settings at the bottom so we're saying uh, whenever we upload an image you should go to a certain folder called uploads we, we've not created it yet and if it doesn't exist it will create it and then go to the images right it should go to the images we'll go to models.py I'm saying go to the images folder inside uploads folder that's where you're going to dump it but then when you are generating the URL okay uh, the URL should look like this. You know, I told you uh, Django is going to save the URL in the database. So when we're generating the URL, it should look like this files. Okay, like this. So file slash whatever else. All right, so um, the first thing is that here it's giving us some error. You understand? It's giving us warning because in Django, if you're ever going to work, work with images, there is a certain uh, package you need. It's called um, Python. It's called uh, Pillow. Okay, so. We're going to install Pillow. Remember, we're using Python 3. But before we do that, um, I'm going to I'm going to type clear, all right, so that I can I can clear uh, this system. Okay, so Control C, right, and clear. Then Pillow, paste. Oops, uh, we missed it it out manually then python 3 dash m uh, pip 3 okay be careful not to use pip because we're using python 3 install and then kilo capital all right enter and boom no module name pip 3 okay we know there is uh, it's just acting up so we'll do pip try pip instead and it works okay collecting pillow okay perfect all right, now it has worked. Uh, we can restart our server. Okay, and do. But before we restart our server, uh, remember that we've changed what the database now looks like. Okay, we've changed it in models.py. We, we've changed it. We now have an images uh, page, images uh, field. So now we have to run migrations again. Up arrow, up arrow, up arrow, up arrow, up arrow, up arrow. 
migrate we're looking for the migrate command okay okay uh, that's the migrate command that we are looking for so that we can uh, generate new migration files for our server all right all right we'll run python 3 manage.py migrate uh, we'll do make migration okay make migration i'll hit enter now it may ask us uh try to remind us that there are already records in the database and uh some of the records have no value for this field no value means that they don't have any entries for this field so it will ask us what to do in that event all right one thing we can do is to go over to our database and clear up everything there otherwise uh we can just tell it to ignore or to enter dummy values there so whatever it is let's look at it says um i have to pull this down to make sure that you are seeing it so it says installing collected okay we've added pillow so here unknown command make migrations okay okay it's uh it's supposed to be in plural make migrations so it's even correcting me saying do you mean make migrations so we're going to do uh python let's do clear all right so you can see everything okay good so python 3 manage.py make migrations so let's see some of the questions it's gonna ask okay so it says you're trying to add a non-nullable field image to dating without a default we can't do that the database needs something to populate existing roles Okay, that is because we already have existing rows in the database. Say, please select a fix number. If you type one here, it says provide a one of default now. Uh, default now will be set on all existing rows with a null value or for this column. Quit and let me add a default in models.py. Okay. So basically, it's asking me to go, uh, uh, it's whether I want to come here and edit this to mention that it can have a default value or whether I should have a one-off uh, dummy value. Okay, so I'll choose one. Add one-off dummy value. So please enter the default value now or as valid Python. Okay, the database, the date, the date time and Django utils time zone modules are available. So you can do example time zone dot now. Basically, it's asking me if this is a time field, okay, like date of birth and stuff, that I can uh, generate the uh, the time by using time zone dot now, okay. But that's not what I want. Uh, we're trying to get an email, so I could just say not email but image, okay. So I could just say no image okay so hit enter invalid input invalid syntax perhaps you need you forgot a comma so i'll do no image i'm just typing any word to fill it there invalid input okay let me correct it so um since this is a python interpreter uh we have to uh, add it as a string not as a variable okay so with the string we have to put a quote around it so i'll put whatever I can type whatever there all right just put a quote around it and hit enter so migrating and it's done now we have to run the migration we'll do the same thing again but this time around we say migrate migrate so make migrations will create the files here migrate will go to the database and create the data following the instructions in the migrations file that it's created okay so that's the difference hit enter and let's see what it does uh, applying whatever okay so let's look at the migrations table uh, folder so here you see that the f there was a first version of our database which is 0001 all right 0001 this is what our database used to look like okay as you can see there there is no image table but if you look here you will see 002 and it says we just added an extra field called um, dating so here there is no image field this is a dating table with no email image field but here we decided to add just one field okay and these are the details of the field so uh with this set of files 
at any point in time django always keeps a, keeps a record of what our database used to look like and uh, what it now looks like all right all right so let's go to our web page and confirm that it's working so uh so far nothing's gonna change on the user end uh nothing really changes okay yeah we need to run our server so we'll go back here and uh in the terminal make sure that our server is running so i'll click i'll tap clear okay then uh python 3 uh manage.py run server okay so this starts our server now we can go to admin so right here okay, let me reload this first to be sure that this works perfectly so we can go to the same url to the admin and say admin hit enter and it shows me admin now uh a number of things has happened here but let's say we want to edit this dating object just one of them what you notice here look at this what you notice here is that it added an extra field for us so now we can edit john doe's name country friends log description but then there's an extra field and it says the default value is whatever remember we entered whatever okay so if i click here now i can open my system and select an image and then uh, click save all right so uh, i'll advise you to do that but before i do that i want to go download an image remember how we download images so we are using uh, pixels for now so I'll do pixels okay so do pixels and then look for a product a profile image okay this time around we're gonna look for someone black just for choice uh, black profile image so the thing with pixels is that all the images are free all right they're free for use and people just snap pictures and put there for free okay so we're gonna take this guy I don't know who it is, but it looks like uh, it looks like he's gonna be good for a profile image. Okay. Okay. So um, save us, and then just save it and uh, make a reference to it. All right. So I've downloaded it, and the next thing I'm going to do is to click here to uh, load it from my folders. Okay, I place it in my download folder. Just click here and select the image. All right, do that for your own. So click choose. Uh, make sure I'm in my downloads folder. Look for it, and uh, I saved it as Putin. Okay, Putin. Click open, and there you go. So that's the only thing I want to change. I will click on uh, save. All right save okay it's saved so if we go back to our page it's actually still not viewable we have to let django know uh that and now images are being uploaded from our site our dashboard and how to display it so the way to do that is to go to alls.py the main alls.py okay uh the main urls.py let's go there open this okay good and then drag this okay good so uh this is dating remember that dating has its own urls.py okay let me minimize all this so it becomes clear to dating has its own urls.py no not this one under dating we're looking for this one in the main project folder which is alls.py here and i'll drag this thing down so we have to import two things uh just know that this is just how it goes with the django uh, for you to be able to upload images you have to uh have this imported this way so we'll do, we'll do django.conf dot uh, urls dot static so we so it knows that we are uploading files import static okay and then we do uh that is static we also need from django django.conf uh, import settings okay so now we have these two we can also uh, come here and tell django how to manage the static urls so we concatenate it all right uh, plus static plus static and then we do settings media url okay remember we we did something in the settings folder okay settings file 
and then we here okay let me minimize this so in the settings file here we de defined media url okay so and then we define media root so we're trying to construct the url so uh and this is in interesting because you just have to do it once document root equal to settings dot media media underscore roots okay so we are just uh, making reference to the media url and uh, setting the document root to settings uh, underscore media roots okay so with this now uh we're good to go make sure there are no extra uh, spaces all right so everything is set perfectly well uh when we upload an image it's easy to see so let's see uh from our front page all right uh from our front page let's see if it can be seen so if we click on view it's not seen because we've not told it in the code so let's go to uh, the index and then change these images uh, to link from the database so we we'll go to settings not settings now but we we'll minimize this go to dating and uh, templates and we we'll go to index so index is looping through this is a, a for loop all right it's looping through and displaying these things so which means we make reference to uh, profile card inside includes okay profile card fine this is where we are this is the code that is handling each of these all right so we want to make the image come from the database uh, and that's pretty simple here in images here we're just referencing one single static image inside the static folder but we need to make a reference to the one in the database so um we're going to delete everything so instead we call, we do friends uh just exactly like this okay so i'm gonna copy this i'll copy this delete everything once i delete everything i'll make this image so make sure there are no spaces and no spaces all right so we're just saying uh just as you are pulling out the name okay a friends array dot name also do the same thing with image that's just it so django will intelligently go to the image uh, field in the database and pull the correct url and uh, insert it here so if we come here and refresh uh let's see what's gonna happen and um it just did not show one okay all right if that doesn't work there is a uh, a popular reason for that okay so um just change it to files um files slash okay come here we reload and see it has appeared now um if you're wondering why so if you're wondering why i applied files uh slash um uh the keyword files here is a, a secret if you come to your django admin that is uh, your website.com slash django all right and you click on dating you see all this if you go to the image the one where we uploaded the image if you look here you will see that django is telling you where the image lives currently if you right click and copy link address okay and paste somewhere let's say we'll paste it here you see that it says localhost.com uh, uh, localhost uh, colon 8000 which is basically your website.com forward slash files slash images okay all right so this is how i knew that there is going to be files there so if you put slash files so i'm showing you this because if your django version is slightly different all right uh it could have something else here and then uh, you will just find out by just copying this uh, image address and pasting and seeing what it actually does in reality if you click this it's going to open the image look at this it opens the image for me see and if you look at the url at the top you will see that it's the same okay all right uh let's continue to the next stage all right i'll leave you, i will leave you to upload the rest of the images for the rest of the um the upload so if we go back or click on datings you'll see this now the next challenge we have is that uh, django is saying that this is a um, dating object all right dating object instead of giving us the actual name of the string okay 
So let's see how we can change that. If you go to your Django uh, file and you go to um, models.py, under models.py, you will see here that the model is um, dating. But we can also define that's a class, right? But we can also define a function and uh, tell it how to the how to represent this class if it it was called as a string. So let's define a function. Let's say def okay underscore underscore str underscore underscore okay that's how um python would do that so str is a self i'm going to remove all this okay so colon and then we tell it what to return if somebody calls this function uh by itself and try to represent it as a string so do f colon all right then we'll put uh brackets here okay we'll put the brackets that is a uh, all right then we'll say self so we can say self dot any of these things here so we can say self dot name all right and then uh it's okay like this if we save now we can come here and uh reload reload and you see it now has ryla obama now another thing we can do is we can manipulate this thing more by saying dash uh okay dash uh brackets and do self dot uh which other field do we need here we can say country country okay i'm just using this as an example to show you that um you can do some manipulations here you see all right so the next thing is we can add more columns here now, if you're really wondering how I got to know about this and it's looking like magic, just know that if you come to um, uh, Django, go to Google Django documentation, uh, Django documentation, uh, you open the admin section, look at Django documentation, we just click on it. Uh, it opens the Django site. And then here was type admin, okay, admin. There's an entire section dedicated to admin. So you see Django admin site is this is different from Django's admin site, Geo Django, and then so on. So look for it. So the whole, the entire page here shows you all the tips and tricks of managing that admin dashboard. All right. Look at this. Does this look familiar? It shows you all the tips and tricks. Okay. So I'm not making these things up. It's not magic. It's all written here. So one thing you can do is to scan through it and see what's obtainable. All right and know where to find things when you need them all right so let's add columns to this guy here if we come here i want to remove the country i just want name all right i just use it as an example let's refresh just to be sure that country is gone okay good because we want to use it as a column now if if you go to admin.py that came with python inside here we can add more details to um make it we can create a class and add more details to um, make it create columns for us so we'll do class okay i'll say uh dating admin just came up with that name and then we'll do admin you know we already have imported admin here so i'll do admin dot model admin so it must be this all right so that's the class so we must use this underscore list display it's a variable that uh, django looks out for to know how to display your your column so the first one is name uh we have to look at them views um models okay so the first one is name country fuel slug description and image okay just for fun i'll copy this in case i need it Back at me. Say name. All right. Country. Uh, field slug. I think uh, this is enough for us for now. So since we made up this name, we're going to tell uh, Django the admin class that we just created so that it will use it to find the model. All right. So this is a good time to reload and see what happens. And oh, our server 
is not on and it's complaining of a possible error so let's see all right remember that the main error is usually the one at the bottom okay so uh that's because of a uh typo it's saying fuel slug we use fuel slug here instead of friend slug okay friend slug ah uh, friend slug i hope we got it okay now it's working well so if we come here we reload and boom see we now have this column this column and this column another thing is that what what if we need a search uh bar here so that we can search uh in django it's simple too so we we'll get back to this same uh admin.py we we'll add a second variable that we call list filter equal to we'll add another tuple and say mention the fields that we want to be searchable so i want a name and country to be searchable okay name and country okay once you save and come here keep your eye here all right so we can reload and boom so now this this table is now searchable by name okay and by country you see all right another thing is uh for instance uh whenever we are adding a new dating so if we click on add we have to enter the names manually and uh, we have to manually type the uh, slug field what if uh, we can trust our users with this all right because uh, not all our users would know to type this log field well all right so what we can do is to tell Django automatically that whenever somebody is filling up this field that uh, it should also create a slug for this field so how to do that we come here we under add another um, variable and call it pre-populated pre-populated okay fields and then uh, we mentioned the field and the field we want to pre-populate is going this is going to be an additional right friends friends log so we say the friends log field colon should be pre-populated with whatever is in the title okay so this way uh, what's going to happen is that Django will come to this place i think we have a free end oh, we're gonna fix it but what django will do is that we're telling django to go to the that this field should be pre-populated with this one okay and django already knows that it's a slug field so whenever you're entering something here django will run a function to convert whatever you entered into a slug field so the error we have is that we don't have a title instead we are using name all right so from the admin.py admin.py and change this to name all right so save okay so it's working well now so if we come here and reload let's reload this page and uh, attempt to enter something the page is reloaded let's say we want to enter uh dave oops as you can see as i'm typing here it's typing here dave whatever space whatever space whatever as you can see uh it's automatically converting this to a slug all right so that's how to pre-populate fields and like i said it's all in the django documentation all right it's all in the django documentation so if you click ctrl f on that documentation of django you will see it see pre-populated field and this is an example you see isn't that what i just did so everything i'm doing here if you just come to this page you will see uh just ctrl f and search for it and you will see other details about it so typically uh, during a website development you can work with multiple data all right multiple tables for now we just have one table which is dating what what if we want to have another table that has to do with um, dating but also contains more information about this user all right and um, let's just say we want to track the person's location house address and whatever and number all right so how do we do that first of all we'll create another table that will track that okay all right so we could um come to models okay so now we need to create another table so i'm going to say uh, to create another table we we'll have to create another model and call it location and say models dot model okay uh, just like we did here just like we did here we're going to do that here too so colon so every time you want to create a new table this is exactly how you're going to do it so you now give the fields that are supposed to be there so i would say name of the location is models dot um, 
car field okay and then here we can enter the max length i'll say 200 okay for instance now we could also change it to city i think uh god i said it city location city since we already have country here uh this was wrong to have a co have country here all right but i used it just as an example but let's continue address now if you've um let's finish this first models dot um, car field so this is actually the street address and then max uh length and uh, 300 okay so now um we're going to do a a relationship we're going to define a relationship but before we do that we need to uh tell just like we did here all right uh because i'm lazy i'll just copy it so we need to tell django what to write if this model is requested okay so instead of saying model dot object we're gonna say uh self dot uh, city whenever the location is to be displayed on the admin section just display self dot city for us okay all right we can also say uh also display self dot uh address okay we can say self dot address okay so now uh whenever somebody's detail is is saved like mr dave partner okay is saved here um the, his location should also be saved in another table but somehow we need to connect these two tables uh so that uh this location here would know that uh, we are working with this particular record so dave's dave's location will know that this is belonging to dave and uh another john doe's location will also connect to john doe all right now if this is strange to you that means you have not learned about this it's called uh, a database normalization so if you've never heard of uh things like many to many one to many and so on uh just pause this video right now go to google straight and type um database normalization okay explained enter so it's usually uh, a short one page uh read up but it teaches you the three key types of ways to uh explain databases okay so um don't go, go don't go for the wikipedia page uh, let me open these two pages and be sure which one i should recommend for you okay good uh this is perfect um so look out for the one that says um guru 99 so let's open it and be sure that it has what we're looking for database normalization okay uh this is perfect so read through this it, uh, as you can see it's just one page but it's gonna fundamentally um, impact your programming life all right so remember that the, the third normalization this one is the highest you should uh, pay attention to the rest are just um, in very very specific scenarios like bcnf extremely specific scenarios fourth normalization fifth sixth no 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 so uh, once you get to three here and you can figure it out you're good you can build any platform but also read down so that um, you know what others are for okay so this explains how to create database uh, databases and link them together okay so i'm assuming that you've read that already just make sure you read this through page from uh, guru 99 slash database dash normalization dot html okay that's where you see that and as you can see there are so many results on google even microsoft officially has a page on that so first normal form second and third okay so you can also read microsoft version okay uh okay so here we're going to have to tell dating table that uh it has to connect with the location table okay so that whenever location is being saved we'll know so to do that we are going to come to dating here and say uh let's create another field this this is we'll call it location anything but usually by convention you should name this field the same name as the model it's linking to all right so location models if you're coming from laravel that should be like location id okay so location models uh foreign key so this is a foreign key so in that database normalization they will tell you what a foreign key is it's basically the id 
that you use to link here uh, like I said don't worry if it's confusing you okay so after dealing with the foreign key we just point at the related model we just point at this guy here so here we're just going to say uh, location so we have pointed to this but we can add other parameters for instance or other arguments we can say on delete so whenever Dave's record is deleted his location should be deleted too that's what we're trying to say so we'll say models dot cascade okay so this means every time a main record is deleted the child record should also be deleted all right so we don't go to a database and see lingering records with no uh, parent all right so we are going to register it as a location so go to admin.py and here we're importing data so we let us import location to okay and then here um just the way we imported this let's control uh control c control v to duplicate the line and uh we can say location all right and then uh, we could also do this kind of thing uh, what's gonna happen when uh, how many columns and stuff we could do that uh, that kind of thing here like I'm um, create a new class and say uh, class uh, location admin admin and then say uh, admin dot model admin okay and then do something like this uh you know it's definitely just optional okay uh you be the one to uh determine if you really want to have those extra fields or not so for here we're going for location we're going to do i think city and uh address right so if you're looking for an admin template that is already built with html css and javascript that you can add to any of your designs whether Django, Lava, PHP, Python uh, website uh, this is it so it's already designed for you you just need to take it and start writing your code inside it and then editing so uh, there are so many settings there are widgets okay so many widgets uh, you just need to uh, edit and uh, hide some of this it's just plain html see see so instead of you uh, having bad designs i just use this and plug in look at uh if you want to design an e-commerce site they have designed all the e-commerce pages for you well, for instance let's choose um, product comparison okay so this is a sample product comparison page so you just edit the html picture on picture and write your own code to fetch this information from the database okay, the design is already there if you go to components you see so many they have so many different types of buttons, alerts, accordions, you see, all these things are already there. So anyone you want to use, uh, once you get this script, you just copy the HTML and then there are so many forms, um, even date pickers. So this is a complete, uh, if I click this now, you see that I can pick a date. So if you're getting something that needs a date, uh, there are tables, there are Authentication, for instance, user login, sign up page. So look at this sign in cover. There are different types of um, sign in pages. You see, with Facebook, uh, Apple sign in, Google sign in, everything already done for you. So um, if you need this, uh, you definitely need it. Just check the link below and go and get it. And some other scripts, I'll put links to other scripts that will make your software development easier. Just take them, download the scripts, and then add it to your projects. And your projects will start looking really amazing. All right? Thank you very much. See you. I think that will, that's what we have. If I check here, I can see that it's uh, city and address. Okay? So back to admin.py. What else do we need? Uh, we can most definitely have filter. And uh, we're filtering by city and uh, by address so very optional and here we are having location admin all right so let's go check out our admin site and see uh the changes that we made uh we're not gonna see anything until we run migrations okay so i'm gonna pull this up and as usual i will i think we've started with running migrations already 
database normalization okay i have to um exit the screen Control c uh, okay type exit uh with this okay we're good so i'll do clear all right so let's run migrations uh python 3 python 3 manage dot pi then we'll do make migrations it's gonna ask us some questions all right uh, there are some questions it's gonna ask us select option provide one of default that's what i'm gonna choose and then it says what's the one of so i'm going to say and uh, that's for the location field right so i'm going to say location lagos okay lagos is a beautiful city in nigeria hit enter and we're good so let's run our server again so up arrow up arrow up arrow up arrow till we find the one that runs our server otherwise we'll just type it okay uh let's just type it mine is not showing up so python python tree manage dot pi run server okay enter and boom our server is on okay i said error you have unapplied migrations that's smart okay we 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 created the files but we've not uh, pushed the migration so let's do clear and do python 3 uh, manage.py then we'll say migrate okay and it pushes it to the database and if there is an error uh, okay expected a number but got um lagos okay let's try again okay the reason is the reason it's expecting a number here uh let me pull this down so you can see uh pull this up so you can see so the error says at the bottom here it said field id expected a number but got lagos all right so we entered lagos instead of an id look at this if you click on models.py and uh, you come here in this models file you will see that we created two tables and one prominent thing we did not create is the id we did not do id why because it will create the id automatically for us okay and auto increment it that is for every new record that is saved in this table it will add a new id right so um in case you don't understand remember i told you to read database normalizations there's supposed to be a unique id field for each record on the database so when we added this location field for dating stable what happened is that this field will contain the id of the record here so that invisible id we did not add here let's say id of record number one is one so this field will put one here here we'll put the image of dave we'll put the description of dave and here and so on here we'll put dave partner okay for the first id then the partner id here will contain one so for the second person so here when the partner is now um when we're now creating the record for the Dave partner's location we could say his location is uh, new york and whatever address now the next person comes and his uh id here is two right his uh, name is uh let's say john doe this is our next record and uh we enter all his other details in the location id we'll enter location id 2 and um, in the location table we'll enter to the second record in the location and uh, mention his city let's say lagos and so on so this particular table dating table is using this the id field we enter here to track which record in the location table belongs to which person all right so i'm going to delete all this i just used it for explanation and then we're going to run down migrations again but this time we enter the correct id all right so uh i do like to go through some of these errors and debugging live with you unlike some other tutors that would um, cut it out but the reason i go through it with you is because it's part of the learning process so that um you when you meet errors you know exactly how to solve them all right so here uh, i'm gonna type clear okay and then press up arrow key up arrow key up arrow key and um, we're looking for migrations yeah exactly so we'll run this it asks all that question again uh okay the migrations have been run 
and then we'll do migrate uh, python 3 migrate okay um so um uh, it keeps believing that um, the migrations have been run but it hasn't look at this the migrations we run were um problematic and it wouldn't run another one on top of it look at this so this is the last migration that was generated and uh, uh, it had issues all right so uh, Django wouldn't generate another migration thinking that the previous one was correct so there are a number of ways to walk around that the first way would be to go to models.py and slightly mod modify at least one of the tables so that um, uh, Django can generate a new migration for it. So, for instance, in address, we can put, um, we can do street. Okay, so I'll just do like this. There should be some special command prompts to force migration, though. Another thing you can do is to delete the migration, alright? Delete the particular migration and uh, run it again. But here, <coughs> I want to use the opportunity to um, put street okay whatever street might mean okay so we'll run migrations again make migrations and uh why is it not detecting any changes so uh one thing we can try is to come to the migrations file delete this latest one and uh delete okay move to trash and then we'll do python 3 uh, manage.py and then make migrations hit enter and uh, it still doesn't work let's try and delete the cache instead so um, delete this um, delete and then we delete the cache okay if you're not having this problem I'm having it's fine um, I just need to fix mine it's possible that you did not make the same mistake as mine. Okay, now it's working. So we've deleted the cache and we deleted the migration file. It's working well. So it's asking us to select, select option as usual. We select one. And then it's asking for the value for the uh, field we created, right? So we'll enter one, all right? One is uh, an ID we are yet to create. So now it has created, right? So let's go to our admin. So here is our admin file, uh, admin backend. If we refresh, look at here. Keep your eye here. Okay, there is a little error. Let's try and fix it. Okay. It says no such dating location. Okay. So no such table. That's because we've not run migrate here. Uh, we just did make migration. So I'll do clear and do Python. 3 manage.py then migrate enter so this goes to populate our table and uh, it worked perfectly well um, no errors so if we come here and refresh now okay so so the challenge here is that um, Django is trying to force us to do something just to make sure that it doesn't uh, encounter errors. Here's what it's trying to follow, force us to do. Uh, Django is saying that we already have um, here models. Okay, we already have four records. We have John Doe, Jen Doe, and um, if button and so on in, already inside our dating um, platform. All right, our dating uh, table, and then we created a location table but that location table is empty okay at the moment it's empty and then uh, while we were trying to run the migration to load the location table Django asked us in the command line here uh, what does what should it do with the previous records so we said okay fill a default value for the location field and then we entered one as a default value so Django quickly went to the location table to confirm whether there is any record that has one in it as the id and it found none because the whole table is empty so it's through an error so one other thing we can do is to choose the other option that says uh, it should go with a null okay with a null value otherwise 
just to make it simple we can get to the database delete those four records all right just for um, the tutorial purpose so let's try first to run migrations again uh, I'll just press up arrow make migrations if it tells us nothing to migrate again uh, we already know how to fix this so we'll go to the migrations under cache or we'll delete the last one delete delete okay and also delete the last one here delete okay now we've done the delete we can do that again from migrations and uh, migration is asking us so look at look at the two options it gave us here very interesting it says provide one of default now will be set on an existing rules with a null value for this column fine say it or quit which is end this migration process and let me add a default in models.py okay so uh let's let's select to and quit for now we've quit so uh one thing we can do is to come to the database and try to set it um up okay i think that's a much shorter way so um first of all we comment out everything we did so now i'm going to just go to um why are we commenting it out because our page will not load unless we reverse some things we did so we just want to comment out the whole location idea and then get back to our database and um, delete the data and uh, uncomment what we commented out okay so if we come here we can say this line i uh, just put a, a hash in front of it that's a comment and uh this line where location is being imported okay the whole of this line highlight and uh, press con control question mark okay and then this one i'll duplicate it remove this one and um comment out this one okay hashtag good so we're now the way we were and um any errors here no so here we'll do the same thing comment out this control hash and then the whole of this place comment it out uh control question mark oops what did i just type what did i just type here okay good select the whole of this place control question mark and save so what else are we looking for uh make sure that this place is commented out okay so uh we're gonna run migrations one more time and uh, go to the database and so um make migrations uh, no changes detected yeah of course we have changes and we know how to fix this so we the pi cache we delete all right um delete well actually nothing to delete here because it did not generate any new um migration files but if we go to our page and refresh we'll see that we already have uh just datings here and uh this is we we'll click here and actually delete all this all right so i'll click the topmost one and it selects everything and now we we'll do action delete selected ratings okay it's a goal we have deleted yes i'm sure i want to delete we have deleted everything okay clean now we can uncomment everything we commented out and uh, run migrations this time so if we go to admin.py uh, we'll do ctrl z ctrl z ctrl z ctrl z ctrl z until location okay so just to be sure that everything is working well um control shift z so here is location dating location admin okay location okay uh the reason is not colored properly is because in the models file here we are yet to uncomment this so we uncomment um control question mark and we're good then we uncomment this one so uh we're good to go um clear uh python 3 
manage.py and then here we're going to put migrate or well, let's say make migration migrations okay it asks us uh, one off here say number one enter it said um, please enter the default value now and the default value we're going to enter is uh, one And boom, it creates a migration file for us. Look at it here. And it worked perfectly well. So this time around, we'll run the same thing, but this one, this time we'll tell it migrate. Migrate, enter. And it populates our database clean. So now we're going to run our server. Uh, the same thing, Python manage. And they'll do run server. Okay. The port is already in use. Uh, why is my port already in use? Does it mean the server is running? Okay, I forgot that one thing I did was I kept the server running in another terminal. So if you click here, it will always create another terminal for you. So if you look at this, you see that I have two terminals running. Okay, one is permanently running the server. And the second one is where I can run my commands. Okay, in case you wonder why it's telling me the port is already used. So if we come back here, we see that we now have datings and locations. Okay, so if I click here. I'll see zero locations and if I click here, zero datings. Okay, so let's go to locations. Let's add a location. And there are many ways to add a location. For instance, we could click here or by the right here, we could click add location. I'll choose this one. All right, so I'm going to enter locations here and uh, click um, save. All right, I'll, I'll save and continue uh, so that I can enter. Uh, I'll save, click save and add another so I can enter about two or three locations. All right. So I'm done filling the form three times and now we have New York, uh, Ibadan and Lagos. These are the three cities I added and we have the tables we entered to. Now uh, the next thing is to add datings and that's where the magic truly happens. Okay, so if we click uh, dating, click add. Now we can fill this form. So let me fill this form and show you some magic. But if you look here, we have the normal name, country, uh, friends, log, description. But uh, okay, we have image. But then here we have something interesting which is a drop down that has the three addresses I added. Okay, and then there's this uh, button to edit and then there's this button to add more. So if I wanted to add more addresses, you see, it brings a pop up for me to add more addresses. Which is smart. This would have taken you a lot of code writing to achieve but um, it comes default with Django. So let's add um, at least one user. Alright, so I've added two datings and uh, we're good to go. Everything is working out perfectly well. Okay, so now let's say we want to add a list of friends in the datings. Okay, okay. A, little, a list of friends. Uh, not ne necessarily uh, needed, but you, you need to know that we're not building a super real app. We're just trying to show you all the uh, possible features in Django. So let's say there's a, a list of friends for each person here, okay? And uh, one person can have many friends and their friend can have whatever, many persons or whatever. So um, that's many to many relationship I'm trying to show you. Um, but the proper way to do it is to do courses. All right. Uh, in a university, for instance, one student can sign up for many courses and then a course can have many students. That's many to many. All right. One course like English language could have 200 students. And for each of those 200 students, each student can have about 10, 10, 20, 20 courses that they signed up for. So that's the kind of thing we want to simulate here. But um, our design doesn't really uh, make sense in that. But just get the idea. One friend having uh, many friends belonging to one person. Okay. And many people having just one friend or whatever that is. Okay. So um, we could find a better model rather than friends to use for that so i think um, um let's just use i want to use something really lightweight so that we don't have to code much uh let's do courses instead of friends so a course can sign up for a a dating a person okay whatever that is so let's do course course uh, models dot model okay and then we do uh email uh, this is all. This could also be like the course, course, 
course code, right? But um, I just want to show you how to sign up for form and validate emails and stuff. So, but this could have been course code, okay? Email and um, email field, okay? Email can be unique, all right? True. Okay, I think instead of course, let's you use um, teacher, okay? One teacher can have many students. And one student can have many teachers. This is perfect, okay? A mentor, facilitator. Since we are doing dealing with the dating, I'll do facilitator. Whoever is going to facilitate the dating, okay? Facilitator, all right? So, um, and again, uh, we're going to tell the dating table that there's going to be a facilitator, right? So, we'll do facilitator. Uh, make sure it's not in capital, okay? Facilitator equal to and uh, models but this time around it's many to many right one facilitator can have many dating prospects okay and uh, one dating prospects can have many facilitators i think that makes sense makes perfect sense now many to many field and then we we'll do a uh, facilitator okay then we'll do comma now we want it to be blank remember uh, in the past when the location field was not blank um django started complaining okay so but we don't want that complaint again we'll do blank equal to true equal to true uh we could also do null equal to true but um, it doesn't really have any effect in many to many relationships okay and um, just to prevent all that kind of error we had before we're gonna have to delete everything we have clear it from the database so that we we'll just run our migrations once okay go clear everything and uh the, the funny thing is that once you make the delete um you run into this kind of problem okay uh, we could have deleted um, the datings first all right so we're in datings highlighted um, make sure you delete the datings first because we did delete cascade this is what i mean uh, on delete we said here this thing that um, once you delete the dating record it, the the location should be deleted all right you know you can also add it here on delete cascade for facilitator but not really uh we do go and boom fine we've cleared the database and uh, once we've done this as usual we're gonna run migrations so uh, but before we run migrations we also need to go to admin.py and um make sure we get them in all right uh this time around we'll call it a uh, facilitator facilitator all right uh, facilitator admin it is what it is make sure we import facilitator here and uh, make sure that we create a facilitator class okay Control c Control v boom and we're there and um, copy facilitator and there we go now the facilitator has only an email we could add other um, fields for this guy but has only an email and we can filter only by email all right so facilitator facilitator okay good so it's time to run our migrations and this time we don't expect any error so we'll do clear i always have to clear so that you will see all right um, as a next step um before we even run the migration i want to also um add a date field so we just go to models.py and um, models.py click here um, i'm just gonna add a date field so you can see what how to uh, work out dates to so let's say um, there is a certain date okay we'll do models dot uh, date field so this handles dates automatically inserts date into your uh, platform so if we come to the admin uh, display um, here um, we could use a um, sort of like slug we could use like um, location and um, hopefully uh, name filter country we could use date okay we could use date and um, all right so uh, if we come to the terminal back all right we can now run migrations and uh, that will be python 3 uh, manage.py and then 
we uh, do make migrations. It's gonna ask us for two fields, okay? Um, check identified error, okay? List display. So it's confirming that we have a sort of error somewhere. It must be a tuple. So let's go check it out, especially on this page. It, it has already told us where it is in admin. It says the list display must be a tuple, and uh, this is where we made a mistake. Okay. Python is forcing me to write um, a better code. For instance, here it's saying that the list display um, must be a tuple. So if you're having only one data, for instance, here we had only one and uh, we had comma and then had the second one. But in this place now, uh, since we had only one item here, uh, we were forced to put a comma to avoid errors. So when we did here, we did not put comma. So add these two commas, all right? Add these two commas to yours. And also, it's telling us that the facilitator is not a field. Uh, we made a mistake. This is a typo. It should be either email, comma, no comma. Uh, not nothing else we just have one field in the facilitator and uh, that sorts it for us now there's one more uh, warning it says dating uh, null has no effect on many to many field I forgot to mention that that here um, it has this has no effect in many to many field but you can do null in other fields okay so if we come here and uh, run migrations again and boom it's now asking us the question now we have to read this carefully because there are two fields we expect it to question us on so the first one says um yeah provide one of the one click here type one and uh, it says here please enter it for value now as a valid python the date time okay uh and django utils time zone models are available all right so how do we know the field it's talking about here because here it's saying uh, the moment to run migrations the first thing it told us was the field that is in uh, is in question so it's asking us to enter a default value so um i would enter i could type time zone dot now okay or i could enter a field i'll say 1996 that's when the uh, 1995 uh, 04 dash 08 okay hit enter and it worked okay good so um, if we come here now and reload we're going to see confirm resubmission or whatever um, let me be sure I'm in the right URL reload good okay so now you have all these people here all right uh, this is monitoring recent actions here and then there is facilitators and then there is dating and then there's location i hope you can see them so whatever you do is being monitored here whether you created new accounts and then you did some deleting okay and so on so it's keeping a log of everything that has happened now let me show you something interesting when creating dating right if we click on add want to create a new dating record um, we're seeing an error and what does it say what does our arrow say okay so it's simply saying uh dating uh say dating underscore facilitator no such table okay that's because we forgot to run migrate okay uh we usually forget clear and say python 3 manage dot pi migrate okay enter so as long as you've forgotten to do this a uh, you will always get this kind of error so we reload and boom good so now interestingly you could enter name right we're trying to create a new dating okay we clicked on add and we could enter name but look at this we could enter date but also look at this very nicely designed calendar and uh, this seems to be using jquery mobile design this is amazing and you can actually manually type in the dates okay you see you are one hour ahead of server time yeah we should always be ahead in life okay so um we also have um okay country friends log description now we can upload image now we can add location but here is the interesting thing uh we can have list of facilitators all right so hold control down or command 
on Mac to select more than one facilitator. But the thing is that we've not created any facilitator, so somebody could have just clicked here and say the facilitator's email is uh, uh, John Doe admin at uh, save. Then you have one facilitator. So why do we have facilitator objects? Remember, because um, in I think admin.py, right? We did not tell it what to. Not here in models of pi. So we are supposed to do this kind of thing to tell Django what to call facilitator, right? We're supposed to tell Django what to do self dot um, email. Whenever facilitator object is called, so we'll reload and um, seems we have an error. Yes, we do. Why do we have an error? Spacing. I think there's an error with our spacing, right? So click here. And okay. So um, if we reload, it was a spacing error. We didn't position that perfectly well. Good. So if we reload now, we can see that there is one facilitator and I can click to select it and I can add more and uh, so on and so forth before I can click save. Isn't that um, amazing? It's amazing. Now if you click on facilitators, then you can see facilitators and you can filter by email as we said. Alright. And if you click on one person, then you can see how you can edit it and uh, save. And there is something interesting that comes with its history. Whatever is happening, uh, Django is keeping record and can tell you what has gone on and on in your system. So uh, that's that's it so far. So the question is, how do you um, check out r related models? For instance, here, um, here we're just doing, we're just displaying country. Okay. We're just displaying country. Let me reload this. Reload. Okay, I just added, I just added two people in the database. Okay, we have two people in datings. Uh, just created these two random people. Okay, so um, we have these two people and we're split, uh, displaying their country. What if we want to display uh, their location? Let's say they have a location in locations table that is not in datings table. Okay, uh, since uh, locations and datings are closely already properly connected now we can actually do that so we'll go to index index uh, is pro profile card so inside profile card we can make reference to location uh, by just saying friends dot name dot we can say in country here control C control V we duplicated the line now we want to mention location we can say location dot uh, city so we're doing the first and the second uh, table. Okay, then we can do use a dot notation to to uh, access the other uh, properties inside our table. So here, we'll just do reload. And it worked well, so we'll come here and do reload. So you see, their city is now showing up, you see? Their city is showing up. So um, Django is able to intelligently uh, go to the other table and fetch data that is connected to each of the users properly. All right. All right. Let's look at forms. Okay. How to create forms uh, in this system. All right. So it's simple. Uh, creating forms. Uh, usually you can create your regular HTML forms and um, just get away with it. For instance, here, let's say we want to create a form for people to add a participant or something. They will just click a link and the form will show up and they will enter the email of um, the facilitator. Okay. So normally you could come in index and then maybe right here and start creating form. You can do form. Okay. And then you do input. Uh, these are just like a regular HTML form. All right. So uh, it's it's okay to do in. It's very okay to do in. Uh, uh, Django, but then uh, Django does magic if you do it in a certain Django way. All right, uh, you have to import uh, 
uh, the form properly and then Django will know the, the website, the uh, tables in the database that the form is supposed to be connected to and um, automatically, okay, not automatic, okay, they call it automatic. Okay, so automatically uh, connect the form to the database and uh, help you do your CRUD easily, alright, instead of you writing a lot of code manually. So uh, to do that and add the form properly, I could um, come here. All right, and create, let's say, um, I have to minimize all this so you know where I am. So among these files here, I'll create a new, fo a new file, call it forms.py, forms.py, okay, so that it's going to handle our forms. And once it opens, we are going to import Django, okay, from, uh, from Django import forms, okay, import forms. So Django already has a utility class for forms. So we import the second thing and say from models, import uh, facilitator, facilitator. So um, this is how we know the model we are working with. Okay, from models here, we're importing facilitator. Now we can create a class and say class registration uh, form. So we're making this up, okay, you could call, the, call, uh, call yours anything, so we'll say forms dot uh, model forms, so it must be model forms, alright, model forms, and then we'll say class, this is another class, so your next class must be uh, called meta, okay, the second class inside, now here you can start defining things, okay, they say which model, we are talking about participant, okay, not participant, but um, facilitator, okay uh which fields do you want to have in the form you can say uh here you add a list of fields for now we are just dealing with email right email okay so uh this is how to connect uh django forms so this means that if we had other fields we'll just include it here all right uh let's say we had email name and so on of the facilitator we'll just include it there but we don't so um Let's register this form. We have to register this form so that it can be used in the view. And how do we do that? We'll go to the view where the HTML template is being rendered. So let's say we want to create a form inside the meetup, meetup details page. We have to register that form, right? So the first thing is to import it at the top here. To import it, we just do from dot .forms, okay, import uh, registration form. So by now you already understand how this uh, import imports work. So if we say forms, it means that there is a file somewhere here called forms. All right. If we say models, there's a file called models. And then when we do the importation, we're importing a class inside a file called registration form. Now we have that class. We can then come somewhere here and um, create the registration. Okay, the the form. Right. All right. So here we're going to do. Uh, call it anything all right registration form registration underscore form any variable is okay i'm just calling it regi registration underscore form equal to and then we instantiate the form we just created okay registration form with that we just imported this we instantiate it here and now we can pass it into our view actually like i said before we don't really need this any longer so i'm gonna delete it and uh go back dating found true i think we need it we need it all right so we just um pass it in down to the view you can call it anything let me call it form all right and say registration form registration form good so this is how we pass it into the dating details page okay so before we create the form first of all let's go to the meetup details page and uh inside templates inside uh here we say detail dating detail right so dating details page click on that and uh this is the page right so uh let's look at what it looks like first so we saw these two people we'll click view profile and it takes us here uh why are we here because our server is not running or oh, because there's an error somewhere in our server so let's check uh probably because the server is not running Okay, uh, let me try and run the server python 3 manage.py run server. 
okay there is um there is a, a typo somewhere inside forms right said so it doesn't have model forms as an attribute so let's confirm dot model form it's in singular okay that was the cause of the problem okay uh there is all right so our uh, site should load now reload so we clicked on a certain meetup and we saw this so we want to add a form here remember that we're not trying to do the best design we're focusing on functionality right so i could add a form at the bottom or by the side wherever it appears i'm not just gonna waste my time there so uh, to start with uh we're just going to i want to copy bootstrap form so bootstrap 5 bootstrap 5 form okay so that um we'll have a, a working design straight up i don't want to start writing um code that will not look cool so form control form readers whatever we're looking for a sample form something like this and boom we have it so copy and since we already have bootstrap 5 we'll go to our dating details drag this down okay the dating details uh this one is displaying the dating okay and uh, underneath it we can do a div all right and paste the form we have now this form has a checkout no we don't need it this form also has password no so we're dealing with just email all right so um for now i can comment this out i believe I can easily comment this out uh command question mark okay so now it's commented out here we can do some magic that um here we can do some magic that um uh django will do i think i should comment everything here out for now because we might need it control question mark here so some magic that django will do all right first of all let's put the title of the form and say h2 uh become a facilitator facilitator or whatever okay save so in django uh since we passed in the form variable we can do form but then form has a number of um things we can use there as if you do as ul okay now you can uh start using the uh ul the ul is on that list that's what it stands for so we can now do ul here okay and put this form line if you click on any line in VX code and do Ctrl X or Command X, it copies, and then you paste Ctrl V to paste. Okay, so uh, this is how we want it. All right, for now, um, if we get back to our form, first of all, I want to copy the submit button that I deleted, so I'll copy it back. Uh, we need it, so copy. All right, and uh, come back here and. Uh, uh, I can cut out this since I can still come back and use it. So this way. Okay, I didn't even delete it. I forgot. So we're good like this. Now uh, let us put the form action and uh, form method. Okay, so action. Uh, let's talk about method first. Since this is a form, you use method, all right? Uh, it gives you met get and post methods for your form, all right? Uh, that's what you can use in form directly in HTML, but I'll use post. Okay, I'll prefer capital letter Then for the action we want it to come to the same meetup page. So when we submit Where is our meetup page when we submit it will come back to this page and um, Either process it or give the person an error. So if I reload here You see where the form is you see so i think i want it in the middle so i'll come here and say i can say something like this this id paste so i copied this i copied this and replicated it here since it has what i was looking for so i can reload and boom so it's now at the bottom you see it's at the bottom so i think um to make it easy for us to see i can do margin bottom right i can do margin top five margin bottom five okay reload 
like I said, we're not trying to build the best, the, the most designed form. We just want to see how uh, it works. Okay, we don't need the most designed form in the world. Okay, so um, now what we were working on was the the form action. So if you come to all.py, you will see this uh, link. So that's the link that brings us to the detail page. Uh, whatever our website is dot com uh, okay slash dating dash details slash this log right that's what we want to come back to so if we come back here we can tell the form to go to all right so this is how you tell it to go to somewhere so we can tell the form to go to url dating detail is it detail or details uh we we'll always have to confirm what's the pie dating detail okay dating detail and meetup dot slug not meetup now but um dating dot friend slug so remember the friend slug field and um that's where we want to so if we reload here all right so let's inspect the element and actually see what um what let's see what django is doing behind the scenes to so inspect element is to see the source code of your page your html page so this is how it's done right click and you click on inspect element but you have to right click on the thing you want to see its source code so that it will zoom down to that thing but since i'm doing it here um it's happening below the screen below the camera so you can't see it okay so that's why i had to do it up inspect and it pulls up this okay if yours is not dark like mine it's because uh I, mine is dark because my operating system i set it to dark by default so make sure that the element tab is selected if yours is at the bottom it's okay this is how to set it by the side if you want uh i think from here you see if you click this it uh, comes to the bottom if you click this it comes to the side and if you want it on the left you click if you want it detached you click here so depending on how your own pulls up but by default it should pull up by the right so i want to drag this down okay we don't need it this is what we need and uh if we look at the form look at this as i'm selecting the form keep your eye here look at the form you see become an instructor you see so if i expand this form let's see what's happening there so there's a ul tag there's an li tag and then there is the form uh, variable there or the form element there that which is the email and then there's a submit button and then on the form we're seeing dating detail Dating dot friends log, and then we say method post. Okay, so that's basically what um, Django constructed for us at the background. Okay, so as a security uh, feature, um, Django in inserts requires you to insert a unique number in every form. So every form submission comes with a unique number. Okay, basically like a unique password that is invisible to the user. So the user enters their email here, click submit. But when this for this form to be submitted, for Django to agree to process it, that unique number must be there. So we're going to add one single line uh, that Django provides us that will always help, will always generate a unique number. It's called the CSRF. So it is it was created to prevent um, or guard against crossed site, crossed site request forgery a special kind of attack that hackers use to kind of um, in a way clone your site and trick the user into using their own uh, setup okay so see csrf token uh so in case you want to read it up it's called cross site request forgery okay so every serious framework uh has a guard against this okay um and uh, of course for everything we have to refresh reload okay work still works perfectly well but then if we now look here we we'll see that django has created this number look at this 
you see look at this long string i thought it's a unique uh, uh string or number that will be submitted with every form if we refresh the page or at least submit this form it should change okay every time you refresh the page look at the number again the last numbers here are hk all right hk of this long string string so let's refresh click outside reload and if we come to that form again you see that it's now fq so uh django changes this string for every page reload so now let's briefly talk about requests okay as you can see in this form it says method post okay so basically there are two main uh, types of requests um, get and post so if you go to your browser and type in a url that url is trying to contact the django site through a get request okay now uh, if you click on a link it's also a get request because that link is going to load a url okay and it's a get request so that url will make call to a function inside the view right this function is made it's going to make a call to this function and try to load what is there so now um but if you fill a form okay and especially like we did and we set it to to um we set it to to post all right it's using a post request to take the contents of the form it doesn't pass it through the url takes it to the function through a post request without passing it to the url now there are other types of requests as you go forward there is put patch and uh, so whole, uh, a whole lot of um, requests i think they call it psr7 request p psr7 okay requests so if you google it you'll see about six to seven of such a uh, request okay but for this uh, we're just keeping it at the two main and the two first ones these are the two first ones get and post and the two main ones in fact other types are most likely variations of posts all right so uh now um we need to go to the function because we told it to go to the same page that we have already told to be expecting only um to be expecting only get requests so this page we're just expecting only get requests so by default but uh, this is the inside views dating detail remember so uh here inside try we need to um check the request types that's why we'll pass this request variable because it contains everything that is coming details of the of the request that's why i told you at the very beginning of this video we're going to use it sometime in the end so we're saying if it is a get request all right so i'll copy this and then hit enter make sure i paste it um i don't know why it's not giving me the correct indentation so i'll hit this good so enter enter so if it's a get request it should do all these things and um let me just indent properly again so what if it's not so if it's not a guest request then we it's probably a post okay uh, we can also do elif we can do elif but i'll do else if it's not a case it's probably a post uh, for our own coding but in other cases you can do elif so we'll do registration form equal to register uh, form then we'll do request so we're trying to pass in request dot post whatever was coming into that form we try to pass it into this model and let um, django handle the rest for us okay so um i have to delete this space so that that's just it okay all right we're gonna do a little validation here's what i mean what if somebody comes here instead of entering the expected email they type rubbish okay the type one two three four five six seven and hit submit okay uh even though google chrome if we would want to validate it for us by default we will also want to make sure that um it doesn't get into our um our database all right by mistake wrong user input so this is how to validate it's a registration form okay since we already um instantiated it here so registration form dot is valid okay and then just this way then we say uh, save registration form if it is valid 
then save it okay so like this just save to the database so check if it's valid if it's valid then save okay then you can also do uh, if it's not valid do something okay you know that kind of thing all right so uh let's keep uh it in a variable instead of just dumping it like that let's say uh facilitator because the registration form is saving facilitators right so we'll do facilitator uh, then we take this outside make sure that there's a colon here right what did i write here this is wrong this way okay make sure there's a colon here okay and um so let's copy this and put it outside so we can have access to it both in the if and the else statement so hit enter okay just to make sure we have access to it outside now here in the if statement we also have to do something which is uh we can then do friend okay friend dot dot facilitators okay i think we use the singular because if we go to models.py and look at the dating models.py and look at the dating we use singular here instead of plural we could have used plural because it's actually a many to many fields right but using singular there's no problem just know that it would have made more conventional sense to use plural okay so where are we so we'll do dot facilitator okay so uh we're trying to add a new record we'll say um uh, friend dot facilitator dot add and then we we'll do uh facilitator fa facilitator okay which is what we just created here so but basically what we're trying to do is like in models we want every time this is created uh some record should also be every time this is this guy submits this facilitator form right some records should also be synced with this all right because it's a many-to-many -many relationship that's basically what we're doing all right so here um one thing we're doing is uh if the get request was successful we we'll return a page so i want to copy this we also want to re return a page in this case but i want i want to copy this and say um no ctrl z so hit enter go back go back and then paste okay okay so that um we can have access to it outside there's something else we have to do shortly and that's uh if this success if this form was successfully submitted we also want to return a special page that uh basically kind of says registration successful you know for the user and to do that we go to templates page you can try it yourself okay but uh, i'm gonna do it here uh, templates page registration successful dot html uh that gives me a blank page okay good we're good so now we're gonna prefill this page so what do we do in every what do we do in every new page we do exactly what we did with the old one so here i want to copy this whole template right and then remove all the html there so i'll copy because of all this all right uh block tags i'll copy and paste here and uh first of all delete 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 okay we're good now we have a body we have the details is uh we can say application successful application successful uh, okay and uh we don't need a special dating.css file do we nope we can say the same thing main heading application successful and um every other thing is good here in the body we can say uh h1 application successful Then below there we can put a link that says uh, a href 
and say um, dating. Okay, uh, let's check urls.py. We want it to return to dating or return to home. Okay, I think home is the best. We can do home and then say return home. Okay. Uh, now another thing we have to do is to put them in div inside the div oops inside the div tag and um, center it how do we center it we can type it manually or we can come here and look for this right this is what we're looking for the whole of this line i've copied it uh, come here paste paste and there we go there we go so uh whenever somebody does something in dating the details okay once it is done here we need to return render okay return render request and then comma dating all right then we'll put registration successful registration dash successful dot html and that's it okay remember we can put an optional third parameter but oh, we're good So this is another way to uh, load a page where the page optionally loads a different HTML depending on what action happened in the page. All right. So remember in coding, if there's a return statement, the function stops running here. It doesn't get to this part. Okay. And uh, this part never gets to run. So this is one way we just render a different HTML for the same function. Otherwise, we have to create another function for this meetup success so we can say def that's a new function and say dating underscore success okay and then just like here we'll do request and colon and then we'll write a code here that takes redirects us to date so there there you go all right Okay, so here we can, we can now confidently remove this. But before we do that, let's go to alls.py and add a new path. Okay, we have one path, two paths. Remember that this path now, before I add the second path, remember that this path, okay, what it looks like is uh, a dating.com, okay, slash, let me put this first. This is what it's going to look like. Dating.com slash any other item you put here, all right? It's gonna attempt to load this site so um, if we create a new uh, link that looks exactly like this it will attempt to load this one instead of that link so to do that we have to create the link above so we'll do path okay um, if you don't understand what I'm saying just watch out part of meetup that uh, dating slash success okay we're making up this so that it will lead us to that um, registration successful page like I said, in convention, you sh this path should have been named register slash successful, okay? Just to make them uh, work together or easy to spot. So your URL should be named after your files, okay? Here we did something really not cool by naming them anyhow. Okay, uh, the views.confirm registration. Um, I think that function in the view, this is what we're supposed to call it. So let's go to the view and, um, you know, we could call it views.datingsuccess and we could call it confirm registration. Okay. Since we're already using confirm registration, that's why I'm using it here now. So, um, we'll continue in alls.py views.confirm registration. Now we can give it a name optionally. So what name do we give it? We'll give it the name confirm dash registration. Now you need to know the difference between using dash and using underscore. Python generally kind of does not allow you to use underscore in functions. Otherwise you start getting errors. 
all right you start getting errors so but uh, you can use it in any other things like uh, properties uh, okay so basically I think we have everything in place now so what I wanted to explain to you was that this site dating slash success okay imagine that we did dating detail let's imagine that so if we had dating detail slash success you see that it matches this url pattern this url pattern says anything that says dating detail slash anything okay without adding extra slash if we add extra slash to something and add something else then um django will know that this is not the same url but as long as it looks like this, any URL that looks like this, dating details slash something, uh, Django will always try to load this one instead of that URL. Unless you place that URL on top because Django reads this code from top to bottom. Okay. Make sure you put a, a comma here because this is a list. This is a list. Okay. So all these items should be separated by comma. All right. All right. Uh, we're leaving this like this. Uh, we're leaving it as dating detail just optionally. And then uh we come to we need to be able to redirect to this url so we come to views and here instead of rendering okay we can redirect so before we redirect let's remove this all right so we want to redirect to that url this url here this url so remember the name of the url is called confirm dash registration so we'll copy it so in Django, if you want to redirect, you have to import uh, redirect from shortcuts. So in shortcuts here, we have uh, Django.shortcuts import render. Then we do redirect. Okay. So we're importing redirect. And then here, we can do return redirect and then redirect. Then we enter the name of the URL. So this redirect function listens to the URL uh, link. So what's the name? Uh, confirm registration. So once this function finished running, uh, redirect will hit the URL here immediately, confirm registration and figure out that, oh, it's going to go process the function inside um, confirm registration uh, in views. So it loads this function uh, from views. And what does this function say? The function simply says load this HTML page. All right. So this is how to redirect from one part of your app to the other the other i have to save this why is it not saved show me that it's not saved so that's exactly how to redirect so let's go and check here we reload just refresh make sure that everything is working well so everything works well now so what happens if you try to use a url this is very important all right pay attention uh from your urls.py we have this all right these two URLs here, we have this uh, one, two, three, four URLs. Okay. So what happens? And these URLs have names, right? Dating, home, confirm registration, and dating detail. So what happens if you try to use a URL that doesn't exist? Okay. If you want to make a reference. So let's go to say uh, dating detail, right? dating detail let's create a, a link that makes reference a href equal to um this way so we say url this is how to make reference to this os.py and uh, inside the url we're making reference to whatever 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 okay this way and then we say click here so this is supposed to be a url so come here and we reload like it's supposed to be at the top you see it throws an error but the error it throws is the one we told it to throw okay so why is it throwing sorry for for not found because if we come to this uh views and we come to the dating meetup uh the dating detail uh function we notice that we told it here that whatever goes wrong in the whole of this place, okay, try all these things. If anything goes wrong at all, run this function that says uh, there's an error. Okay, that's why it's running this function. So um, it doesn't really discriminate. But if we print, if we do print 
r. Okay, we're printing this variable so that it will give us the actual function. What you're going to see on your command prompt is that, um, let's see here. If we run this again, so let's go here and refresh. Uh, let's refresh this page so that it will generate that error. Okay, says this again. Fine. Let's uh, go to our command prompt and then, okay. So it says reverse for whatever, whatever we typed is not found. This is not a valid function or pattern name. Okay, so this is how uh, Django is telling us that uh, the actual error, all right, in case you're getting some sort of error that you can't explain, Django attempts to explain it to you that that URL does not exist. That's what the error looks like, okay? So we're going to go in our page and remove it. Where is it? So the idea is that you can use a route that doesn't exist. That's it, okay? Whether it's in your form or... So you, you could be typing a route and you make a little mistake. Django will not work. It's going to throw an error telling you that uh, something that that pattern, that's the language it uses, that the pattern doesn't exist. Okay. So be aware of that before you see errors that you can't explain. So uh, let's test our work so far. So email and uh, we're going to type an email, right? So let's type something wrong first. Let's say we're type the wrong thing it's not an email right so we we'll click submit first of all google is forcing us to enter an email and we can beat this google email we can't because um i wanted to show you that uh django will throw an error if uh, if the google chrome does not stop it so this error this pop-up you're seeing here is google chrome i wish we added an extra field so that um we can test the validation all right remember that we did validation in our function so if we come to views we said uh, if registration is valid what happens if it's not valid it goes back and gives you the error so unfortunately uh, we can't test that so but let's try and test the normal uh, correct email I think a good way to test it is to edit this uh, th this page okay so so here in the form we will go to input and input type uh once we change it from email so li so input type we have email so this is why google is uh the google chrome i'm using is trying to give me that pop-up but if i change it to text google chrome would think we're dealing with a text here so i can submit now submit and good it's good we have this error and it's saying that uh dating detail this page is not found okay so probably something wrong with our url now um let's go and correct it let's check the url in the form okay so if i go back if i go back and this is the form and we check the url the url said dating detail uh and then with the friends log so we ha we actually have a dating detail but the problem is here I used dollar sign and I know you must have seen it a long time ago. I used dollar sign instead of percent marks, which is just a typo on my part. Okay, so if we return and uh, go back and uh, reload and uh, disable. Okay, re go back again. We didn't go back correctly. So reload this page, reload this is the home i'm trying to get back to that page all right so let's start debugging this code in many ways number one is uh just as long as we're in views.py under dating detail the first thing we want to correct is here i said is valid instead of is valid okay it's valid good number two is that here in the exception part we said error okay um, let me give it normal error. Okay, here we said error equal to error message. So copy. But um, in the dating details page, we try to display it, but we display it as error instead of um, as error message. Okay. So that when next we have an error, we can see the actual error under. If 
we reload see the actual error you see it says reverse for dating detail with argument not found okay good so um this is a uh, the first step to resolving the error now secondly we have to find what the problem is somewhere there okay guys let's uh, uh solve this problem uh, first of all if you read it it says that reverse for dating detail with argument whatever not found now you need to understand that um once you see reverse for it's talking about you trying to make a call to a route that doesn't exist that is a url that doesn't exist so we'll look for where we're making the url call and it's in dating details and here we're saying dating detail the that's the name of the url and we want to pass in a parameter in the form and we're saying dating but actually if you look at views under dating detail you'll see that what we're passing in is friend all right what we're passing in is friend but when we wanted to use it we we just came up with dating so it's a typo by me and uh, it should be friend okay so that's basically what it is and if we come here and uh reload reload boom we're good so i'm going to try and test out the email invalid email thing i'll call it text enter invalid email thing so um all right so i click submit and uh it returns me here you see it says invalid email address you see because it now does uh django handles the verification the validation for you all right so it has done the validation and told me that this email address is invalid but normally google chrome will do it for you like now if i click here google chrome handles email validation in particular for me all right so let's fill up uh, a proper email address all right this is a proper email address i'm gonna click submit and uh, let's see what happens there you go submit and uh Boom. brings us here and says confirm registration missing one required positional argument success okay so uh let's start from here simple problem we have passed the form details to dating detail and uh slash friend slog okay so if we go to urls go to dating details slash friend slog all right we'll see that it's making reference to dating detail and we go to dating detail url uh views we are saying that if it's um a post look, look at here if it's a guest so if it's a post we are making reference to confirm registration so we are redirecting to confirm registration and confirm registration is this function here and it's saying that we need this so i added this while i was debugging so i'm going to de delete it so which means your own shouldn't show that error so if we reload it's going to ask us whether it should reform resubmit okay look at this now it says application successful so this is beautiful beautiful so far if we click here it should take us back to home beautiful okay but the interesting thing is if we come here in the database let me reload reload this page on facilitators if we click here we now see that we have this facilitator okay this is the one we just created now this is the one i created behind you uh okay so at the end of the day um it's working perfectly we can easily add facilitators and um, uh, any other thing we want all right so let's even drill down into the latest facilitator i click here and uh this is what it looks like okay and then there's locations fine so have you ever asked yourself uh what if we try to um create uh, a field that already exists all right well, what if somebody says view profile and um here we try to resubmit the field that already exists okay so what if we say um real oops real partner we've done that before so we're trying to do that again say so click submit and um a facilitator with this email already exists which is wonderful how did um uh, django know to um validate this field because when in models.py here facilitators we told it that the email field is unique all right 
what if you want you don't want that error okay uh, what if you want it to check first before it creates there are so many ways to accomplish that so many ways um one cool way is to come to views right here we're going to do some modifications but first we need to import the model okay so uh we can import the uh model for facilitator facilitator model okay now we've imported facilitator model here in dating field we can modify this instead of telling it to just attempt to save straight okay we can tell it uh something to do uh okay so let's get the user email first we'll say user email okay and we're gonna say is equal to registration form so go to that registration form which is this you okay, go to the registration form uh, get the cleaned data okay and the clean data we're talking about is the email field so if we had other fields we can still get them this way so now you get the email field we're gonna now say facilitator is equal to this facilitator we imported the facilitator model dot objects okay dot get or create so that's how you do that you now say the email field is equal to this user email we got from the form okay so that's exactly how to do that so we got this user email from the form okay we cleaned up the form we picked out the user email all right and then we now say um you have to create it but before you create it check whether it exists okay if it exists all right don't create a new one don't give us errors and stuff but if it doesn't then create it that's what get or create is and we're doing that for the unique field of the email address all right all right since we're no longer using the save what we can do is to come to the forms.py and uh, instead of using model form okay now we can use another uh uh object in django called um form okay so now um inside here we don't need any of this again so we'll comment it out uh command question mark and we don't need the facilitator command question mark and uh now we can use email forms dot email field okay so we're basically telling it to go to the email field and get the form since we're no longer um using the save so this is another way of um, handling forms in uh, Django so let's look at the form as you can see if we reload here okay um, of course so before we fix that let's do uh, you can add other stuff into this like email field you can say label for the form your email okay so that's what I wanted to say but let's resolve the bug we just saw okay that's because this returns a tuple okay so we just do comma underscore all right um, that should resolve it and uh, we reload this page and boom application successful so let's return now and um, take a look at the form okay so here take a look at the form it says your email remember before it says email but now it says your email so if you're looking for an admin template that is already built with html css and javascript that you can add to any of your designs whether Django, java php python uh, website uh, this is it so it's already designed for you you just need to take it and start writing your code inside it and then editing so uh, there are so many settings there are widgets okay so many widgets uh, you just need to uh, edit and uh, hide some of this it's just plain html See? so instead of you uh, having bad designs i uh, just use this and plug in look at uh if you want to design an e-commerce site they have designed all the e-commerce pages for you uh, for instance let's choose um, product comparison okay so this is a sample co product comparison page so you just edit the html picture on picture and write your own code to fetch this information from the database okay, the design is already there you go to components you see so many they have so many different types of buttons alerts accordions you see all these things are already there so anyone you want to use uh once you get this script you just copy the html and then 
there are so many forms um, even date pickers so this is a complete uh, if I click this now you see that I can pick a date so if you're getting something that needs a date uh, there are tables there are authentication for instance user login sign up page so look at this sign in cover there are different types of um, sign in pages you see with Facebook, uh, Apple signing, Google signing, everything already done for you. So, um, if you need this, uh, you definitely need it. Just check the link below and go and get it. And some other scripts, I'll put links to other scripts that will make your software development easier. Just take them, download the script, and then add it to your project. And your project will start looking really amazing. Alright? Thank you very much. See you.